Good morning and welcome to Sweden. In a few minutes you are going to witness an exciting battle on the road, or more precisely on a 90 km long bike path from Hagfors to Karlstad, as this Ski Classics Challenger event Klar Elf Sloppet takes place this fine morning. The elite men will start at 9 a.m. local time, followed by the elite women five minutes after. I'm your lead commentator, Temo Virtanen, coming to you live from Finland, while my expert commentator, Öyvin Muenfjeln, joins me from Norway. Öyvin is a former pro team athlete with many top 10 places in the pro tour, and he has raced today at Alokped on roller skis, as Klar Elf Sloppet is often called. So it's good to have you on our live broadcast, Irvin. Uh, what do you want to say about this course? I mean, it is a very flat one, but a beautiful course. Yes, um, thank you, Timmy. Um, it's uh, it's really really uh, nice track. It's it's long, it's special in the way that it's uh, almost 90k of of uh, bike path uh, they are skiing on. It's narrow, uh, but uh, in all in all, it's it's uh, it's a great finale to the roller ski uh, uh, long distance season. And when we look at the scene, the men are getting ready and we can see the roller skis here. They are all similar, of course, because they are ski goes, number two wheels. And we assume that these guys had a chance to check these uh, skis yesterday and then you pick, a, pick, pick your pair and that is then given to you on a, on a race day. Yes, this is a normal procedure in this race. You, you on uh, Yesterday they were able to, to test the skis and they... They are marked. We're marked with their numbers, uh, and they uh, this uh, morning they uh, they can uh, they come to the start line, and the skis are there. So that is really good, and it's uh, it's uh, it makes it because these wheels are uh, rolling. The rolling resistance are uh, almost similar, so it's 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 no big uh, dif differences there. But you have the the possibility of uh, some of the ski skis being. Uh, uh, go, not going in a straight line. So uh, some some skiers are uh, preferring to have a little bit, uh, or they are not completely straight. So uh, the, on Saturday they can test that the skis are good for them, and uh, then they can go today. Indeed. And speaking of our skiers out there, the men will start, and in a couple of minutes, and then women right after that. Well, five minutes gap in between. When you look at this field. Uh, we are expecting some really tight fights there. Some duels. Uh, Max Novak has been almost unbeatable. He yes. has won four times, four consecutive victories in various roller ski races, and he is going for his fifth one. But then, of course, Nigord is out there as well. Uh, Johannes Ekler. So, what would you want to say about the field? Who are your favorites? Yeah, it's it's really it's really hard, and it's I think that the two the two biggest favorites is Max Novak and Andreas Nigord. Uh, because of the the nature of the, the course, it's long and flat. Uh, I think that uh, it it can be difficult to break away. Uh, and history has shown that this race often is is uh, decided in a sprint. So um, uh, I think that Andreas and Max would have to be the biggest favorites. Um, and then we have Stian Berg, uh, winner from 2019, uh, last edition. And uh, so I will maybe. Put those three at the in the highest in the first class, and then you have many other good skiers: uh, Kasper Stados, Stian Holgor, Johannes Eklöv. Uh, we have um, Thomas Gifsta, Marcus Johansson. Uh, yeah, a lot of good uh, good skiers here. And Peter Nordhuk should be racing as yes, well. But of course, Nordhuk. we are not expecting him to win. But it'll be interesting to see if he can keep up with the the lead group, and at least for how long. Yes, and he he has had a really good, uh, nice progression uh, throughout the roller ski season here. So uh, I expect him to be up there for a bit of a time. And I think you see him? No, you, he was at the left side of the picture here. And also you mentioned Estian Hulgård. Uh, he was in a breakaway. He did actually a breakaway like two years ago. But then you guys caught up with him. Yeah, just but that was, the narrow. Finish, that was narrow. That was narrow. He almost did it. So uh, he was really strong that day. So it's possible. It is away. indeed possible, but we're not really expecting that many breakaways. But of course, it could happen. We can see, as you mentioned, Max Novak and maybe Andreas Nigord, some of those guys trying to break away. And if they work together, then an actual breakaway can materialize. But we'll see. The start is about to get about to happen very soon. This is kind of the, you know, this moment, the nervous moment. Or maybe that's yes. not that nervous anymore. You kind of like just focused on, on it, you know, 
It's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, a there they go. nervous now. So. <laughs> yes, off they go. They will be on this road for a few kilometers uh, before they actually cut in to the uh, bike path. But let's see. I yes, guess, it's, uh, uh, it's two or three kilometers on this, this uh, wide uh, road, uh, which is really good to get the field, uh, uh, to set the field a little bit and everyone to find their place. But uh, I think we will see uh, quite a battle to get, uh, get in first in, on the bike path here in uh, some minutes. And there we see number one, Andreas Nigor. We talked about him, Team Ragte Charge, formerly known as uh, Team uh, Eiendom. And even before that, Team Santander. This was a team that you represented yes. before. Yes, and he, he has gotten one teammate with him, Kasper Stados, with uh, number 10 there. Uh, and also on the left side, Klaas Nilsson with number 8. He won uh, Red Bull Nordenschalsloppe this uh, winter. So he is and a he, strong athlete. And he is on the team with Team Kurira, together with Stian Hulgård. He is a strong skier, of course. And Vasalop at fifth uh, two years ago. Yes. So Klaas Nilsson is certainly... Uh, knows how to do Vasa Lopet, so we'd assume this could be a race for him as well. This course should suit him really well. Number and 14 men... is Gustav Heldal. He is uh, Team Kaffebryggerie uh, athlete and has been, uh, been uh, uh, gearing up his, uh, his skiing the last year. He was uh, starting as, um, as an uh, a uh, staff member for Team Kaffebryggeri and taking pictures and helping, and now he has uh, become a part of the team and is skiing for them. So that is quite uh, cool, cool. That is really exciting. Speaking of Team Kaffebryggeri at Vettetulis uh, team, any news from those guys? I haven't really heard that much about them. Kind of a bit of a s silent lately, yes. but they are out there. Uh, yeah, they are racing. out there. They are skiing. They are... They are uh, preparing for the season. So, But yes, uh, quite low profile... Uh, uh, season so far. Vettle was of course uh, the uh, one of the arrangers of um, uh, of uh, Totenrullen, the first challenger race uh, this year, which uh, Andreas Nigor won. So, uh, so he, he has been uh, maybe more uh, focusing on uh, on the um, uh, on the on the on that race in for the first part of the season, but I think they are training good, everyone, and we'll see today. I think this race can can fit uh, Vettel and also Magnus Westheim is a strong athlete. So, it, uh, and they are and also yeah four athletes on the start line, so they um, they have uh, possibilities to play within uh, in uh, that sense. Indeed, they are. You know, Team Café Brugeria, the Café Boys, as I call them. But the women are getting ready here. What about them? We talked about the duels, really tight fights. Of course, in this particular race, we are expecting Hanna Falk and Lina Kuskren. Lina Kuskren won two years ago. She's only done this race uh, once, but she said that this is a good race, fits her uh, really well. What do you expect? Are you expecting these two to break away right away, or what do you think? What could yeah, be the kind of the scenario? Yeah, I, I think that uh, Hanna and, and Lina is, is uh, quite clear uh, favorites here. Um, I, I it, it will be interesting to see how they do it and how they if they set the pace high at the beginning. But I expect maybe a quite slow pace from the start, and that they will be at least for uh, for some kilometers they will be uh, all, all all the group together, and uh, then we'll see. Then we will see. It's uh, it's a part uh, with uh, at about seven, eight, nine kilometers where it's a little bit it's more. Uh, twisting and turning and some small apples, maybe we'll, we'll see some action there. There are supposed to be nine uh, women out there, I'm actually counting eight, and you can see a lot of people behind them. That is the recreational skier uh, cr group out there getting ready, so we'll see. Uh, there, These women might get some, well, help from the, those guys as well, particularly if some of them are using really fast skis. Uh, because for the recreational skiers, they can uh, take their own skis and yeah, use their own skis for this race. Of course, recommendations are given uh, and uh, to kind of like to pick the ones, a certain type of wheels that will be equal to the ones that the elite skiers are using. But we'll see. That's uh, also going to be something that might uh, mix a little bit or might... Uh, uh, bring some flavor into this race if some of those men uh, will be able to catch catch up. But we'll see. Now the women are out there 
Do we have the old nine there? Yes, I think we do. And as you said, uh, Falk and uh, Koskren, those two are the big names here. Are you expecting anyone else to be I, close I, to them? Yeah, I, I don't expect any, anyone to be close to them, no. Not, uh, not to be honest, but uh, I think that the battle for, for third is, is, uh, is quite big. And it, we have to remember that it's 20,000 kroners for, for the third place here. So, so I think that the, the uh, seven uh, uh, other girls are, are going to, to have a fierce battle for third. Indeed, uh, good, good money there. That is about two thousand uh, euros, twenty thousand uh, crowns. Oh, but but maybe uh, Julia Angersö and uh, Maria Rene Gangsö is uh, is uh, two of the uh, uh, girls fighting for the that position. I also think that they have a young skier from uh, uh, Lager One Five Seven. Is that uh, correct? No, maybe not. Yes, there is a there is a one one young skier there as well, uh, yeah, supporting from Hanna. The youth, from the youth team. Indeed, a good uh, experience for her. Yes, it really is, and it's really cool that Lager One Five Seven has done this um, uh, youth uh, uh, team to to help build the sport, and we need uh, we need the girls uh, going long distance skiing from an early age, like you see Max Novak and Emil Passion has done in. And Oscar Berlin has done in the in the men's class, and that uh, that is the way to go, I think. So when you think about uh, Hanna and Lena, what do you think are the sort of the strengths and weaknesses that these two skiers have? Hanna has been showing a really good form, and she said, you know, that this is a good test for her to do a 90k. She hasn't really done a 90k race. No, oh, that yes. is yeah. The, the the strength of Lena is that she's is really and they have a good endurance and. And I don't think the distance will bother her. Uh, that is a little bit more questionable with Hanna, that she maybe could get some uh, uh, trouble with the distance. Uh, but um, uh, on the other hand, I think that Hanna has maybe been a little bit more consistent throughout the season. So um, yeah, that is uh, that is going to be an exciting battle. Indeed, it will be. Back to the men's race, and here we have the, the breakaway king from yeah, last we'll year. Exactly. And also, when we talk about roller skiing uh, and double poling, uh, which is good to point out, particularly if you look at the SD and hurl guards, you keep your legs very close together, which is a little bit um, um, uh, and impossible in the wintertime because we have a track. But when yes. you're on the road, you can actually like, oh, he's speeding up again. So, technique-wise, since you are a former pro team, let's talk about that a little bit. A double polling, technique-wise, roller skiing is very similar. Yeah, yes, it's snow really ski, similar. Snow skiing, but yeah, there it's, are, it's, it's really similar. But you have you have this uh, you have always a complete like you are going on icy tracks all the time because you are really getting the response from the asphalt from the from the ground. So, it's a it's 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 maybe a little bit less technical to do the um, to do the. Um, or do it on roller skis. Uh, and here they are now turning left in just 100 meters and they are going into uh, the bike path. And here the Klarelfsbanan, uh, the, 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 and the old railroad is beginning. So you see that they are speeding up to, to get a nice position uh, on when the road narrows here. Now this is a little bit different from, uh, from two years ago when you guys hit the race. You actually cut into the bike path much earlier. And yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we did. I don't know. I don't. I, I think we will. We did it on this in this point. At, uh, I, I think so. But at least there is a bike path a little bit earlier. There's a possibility to go there. Yes, it is. But I don't think we have used that uh, possibility for uh, for the for the race because it's so many guys here. And it's good that there are the, the it's the the road gets narrow in small parts, bits and pieces. So it's not like Boom, and you you are on the narrow path. It, it takes a little bit time here. You see that uh, mm -hmm. they're getting a little bit uh, narrower, and in some hundred meters they will go into the bike path. You see, Andreas is uh, is good, tactical, and knows about this. He has done the race several times, so he is uh, he's up there. So 
speaking of tactics, tactic wise, what is a good spot and position to be to be in, particularly in the men's race where you still have that many guys? Second or third, I would say in the in the row. It's it's not good. It's it's not ideal to be first because uh, you are taking the wind uh, for the others, but. Second or third is, is uh, I think, the best position maybe to be in. But because the, the battle for being second or third are really hard, it's it's difficult to stay there. Uh, and uh, because in a winter time, you can always that you can sometimes see uh, top skiers being really far away, uh, depending on the conditions. Kind of taking it easy there, like in a thirtieth or fortieth even even place, and, and just waiting. But in roller skiing, since the conditions are not maybe that uh, uh, varied, it might be better to be higher up. Right? Yeah, yeah, it, it can be, and uh, or it is. So, so it. Uh, but uh, but uh, here in this race, it's it's uh, and also on, on roller ski, there you can find that you will see that many of the favorites will be far behind in the in the beginning, and uh, uh, I expect to see uh, guys. Uh, who can win this being being far far behind the the other uh, uh, the the leaders in in some parts of the race because they they uh, but then of course you don't want to have any breakaways at front then you are in trouble but uh, uh, I think many will uh, will bet and bet on it not happening or having teammates that can can close the gaps and here we can see that uh, bike path we talked about. It's it's really it's really nice to have this this track and for for 90k they will do this uh, do this track and it's uh, it's a really special thing and I I'm not sure that we can you have this any any other on the any other places uh, in the world actually so uh, uh, you have small bits and part b pieces of of uh, tracks like this but not 90k in one <laughs> in one part. No, I haven't seen a bad place like this. I two years ago when you guys did the race, I did the course the day before, and uh, I was taken by su surprise, you know, about the the track and the beauty of it, and and it's a uh, it's used for you know not just for roller skiing, but of course for uh, uh, biking, and they have these uh, buses that go back and forth between uh, Karlstad and Hartford, and you can go there, take a bus and ski or bike uh, from one place to another, and, and of course and Karlstad. Yeah, and yesterday it was a bike uh, race here. Indeed, that is correct. And I was going to say about Karlstad, famous place in in Sweden, often called the kind of the sunniest city in in Sweden. And uh, it's also speaking of the Café Bruggeri at Coffee Boys, it is a uh, it is the uh, hometown, home city of uh, Lövsberg, you know, the uh, the Swedish coffee brand. So cool. Now we see number thirty three here. It's Petter Schinsta. Uh, is uh, okay, he's skiing T today? He's skiing yeah. with together with Petter Nordug. He's they are uh, they are uh, uh, having the same sports staff, and actually the sports staff is Åge Schinsta. Uh, he has been the the leader of uh, the national team, uh, sports chef in the national team cross country skiing department, and also worked for. Fix uh, some parts and famous uh, famous person in Norwegian cross country skiing. He is uh, behind the behind the uh, field on uh, on the bicycle today. Since you uh, brought that up, a bit uh, and there's been quite a lot of talk about him and discussion. And as you said, he has progressed really well. He's done. He's been really active. So it really seems that he is into this. And he has said that he will do more races in the winter as well, and kind of based on that, uh, make his decision. But how serious do you think he is about coming back for sure, for for real? I think that he um, uh, is considering it. Yeah, but I think that he will have to do, have this season to feel a little bit about his motivation and about his uh, his will of, of training. Uh, but uh, for now, it looks quite uh, quite uh, promising, and I, I think that uh, I thought that he he did this 
much with uh, for promoting his his uh, brand, the Nordic brand, which has uh, several sport equipment for sale and uh, things like that. But uh, with uh, with him doing so many competitions, he and his uh, he, he he seems genuine genuinely interested in in doing this uh, this race. So um, uh, or doing this uh, long distance ski races and. Uh, so um, we'll see. We'll see. It will. It will be exciting. And of course, uh, we. Uh, everyone is watching Petr when uh, whatever he does in in cross country skiing. So. Uh, and the season yeah. twelve will be extremely exciting because he will do some of the races. We have all our athletes hopefully getting back to the the business as usual, the, to a normal winter after the kind of a two year uh, extension. You know the the COVID uh, pandemic and. Uh, we have Marit Björgen, we have uh, Sunbu as, as well. So I have so many good, uh, big names there. It'll be so many good, exciting battles. And But now we'll you see. You can see Lee Neus is, is uh, putting a, quite a hard pace. And it's al already one girl there who are struggling a little bit. But uh, I expect her to get contact again because... Uh, uh, it's still very early and I don't think that Lena will do put the hammer down uh, already now. Probably not, but of course she knows her strengths and knows what works here and wants to get a good training out of this too. That We have to remember that this is this is the, well, wouldn't really say the last roller ski race in the season, but pretty much this is kind of the final one. The final big well, one, at least. The well, final big one, exactly, in, a, in a, what we call the summer season. And our, our final uh, challenger, challenger's event before the, the winter. Yes, so it is. So we will <clears throat> yeah, certainly cool. see some action here. And we have to point out that these skiers, you can get points for your champion battle. Of course, Lena has already got the 50 points, uh, same with uh, Nigord. Uh, but if you win a race, you get 50 points. That'll then put towards your... Uh, champion point account yes and here is it simling brixnoli we have there or is it uh now yes is this uh no, now it's a... Håkon holden i think was number 21 uh has he bro broken away from the pack or is he behind yeah this behind. is sometimes a little bit difficult to say and judge because we don't I think see maybe he can have or did he break something and he got a pole and he's now now trying to catch up? We'll have to wait and see, but I can't see anyone behind, behind him. So him. If if he's uh, in front, he has gotten a substantial lead. He looks quite quite enthusiastic and uh, fresh. So we'll maybe have we maybe have our, our first uh, breakaway here, uh, Temu. Could be. I mean, of course, there's there's always the case that we see these uh, enthusiastic athletes uh, trying to break away. That happens in the winter time quite a lot. But of course, uh, uh, in the winter, it's uh, much easier to do. And on a different type of courses. But if we can see a bit of the Swedish Värmland and nature and Orden colors, the leaves are turning. Changing color. We are in a mid September, a little bit past that. Here we can see. Here is the rest of Philly. Yeah, it's, rest, he's in yes. front because he was here some uh, some yes. uh, seconds ago. So uh, our guy Håkon Holden from um, uh, from Team Nightingspunkin is uh, is up in front. Uh, he's uh, he did actually do the Volodalen uh, uh, fi final uh, last in in March. And we were, he was 42nd in the in the Orefjell uh, in the last race of last season. So a solid skier. Yes, he is. He is. So uh, this is uh, this is really interesting, and, and it will uh, make another dynamic of the race. And of course, the best thing for him is to, to get some, maybe no, to have one or two skiers with him, and prefer preferably from the from the right teams. But um, We'll have to see. It's uh, it's uh, in any ways, it's it's really good for the race. And, we'll, um, and we we'll, can see him carrying that uh, drinking belt, which has become very uh, popular among the elite skiers. So you can see that uh, belt and uh, and uh, the tube that you can 
suck in some uh, liquid whenever you need. Yeah, it is, uh, it's is—it's actually a, a plastic bag, Camelback. It's many is known as uh, for a Camelback. Uh, it's a—it's a bag filled with a sport drink, and you attach a hose to it and uh, and uh, put it on your starting bib um, uh, with Velcro or something like that, and. Uh, uh, then you have drinking easy, accessible uh, whenever you want. You see, I think that was a broken uh, uh, pole. Uh, what is it called? The uh, point point of this pole. Uh, and he had he. Had, I think that most of the guys here are, have spare parts uh, with them in the drinking belt also, so they can change without needing to change the, the complete pole. Of course, but that takes uh, quite a long, long time just to stop and, you know, change the uh, spikes there. But here we have this guy, number 21, in the lead. You talk yeah, about him. See, you can see that the way he's going, he's really going for it. He, he's, uh, he's going full gas and he, he sees this as a great opportunity. Hawken Holden. That is the one, and then back to these ladies here. We see that Lena is still yeah, doing all the work. she's pushing quite, quite hard, I think, or at least finding a good rhythm. And I don't think I don't know if uh, Hanna is is, uh, is uh, helping her with the pace keeping, but uh, I think that uh, if Lena is, I think Hanna now is smiling because uh, when Lena is going hard in the, in, the, in the front and. Anna is uh, just on the wheels. She is saving some energy. Indeed, that is the case. It's, but it's breaking apart behind there. Looks like uh, three skiers there. Maybe the fourth one is uh, struggling a bit behind that. So Lena is definitely keeping keeping up a good pace. Fast, pushing really hard. More four skiers here in the front, isn't it? Good to see some audience being up so early and cheering for the athletes. Yes, and that's good that they now can join these sports events and that we can have spectators out there watching. And again, you can see a bit of a, the terrain or the, the forests. And we talked about it by, you know, this road bike path. Yeah, and quite it's, a lot, it's really, and it, yeah, it's it's really uh, to have these long straights. It's uh, you, you can see that it was built for a railroad in the <laughs> late 1800s. So it's 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 uh, flat and it's straight straightforward through through the woods. And if I remember correctly, so this last uh, this first part is more of a uh, going through forests, and then we after after a while we get a little bit of fields and stuff, and some small towns that they they go go by, by before they reach uh, that sunniest city in, in Sweden, Karlstad. Yes, it is. It is quite, uh, in the big uh, scheme of things, it's, it's, it this, it's quite woody, uh, much forest in the, in the first part. And then towards Karlstad, you get some more, more open fields and, um, and some farm, far, farming and farms, uh, which makes it a little bit more exposed for the wind. But uh, it does not seem like the wind is going to play any part today because it's, the leaves here are almost completely still, I think. So uh, that will not play a part of the race. And the temperature is around 7, 8 degrees. If I remember correctly, two years ago, it was a really a warm, warm day when you guys raced. That weekend was much warmer than today. Now yeah. we can have a typical September temperatures. I I say I remember two years ago when we came into the came into the uh, it came to Karlstad and it was it was so warm it was twenty twenty five degrees uh, a little bit colder on the race day but um, but uh, yeah it was still very warm but now we and have actual, to follow yes. follow girls here ninety eight. Ida Palmberg, she's a teammate of uh, Ida, so she is helping her with the pace making here. And we have Hanna Falk, of course. 
So now Lena didn't want to do all the work. Taking nope. a little bit of easier there. Dropped it back to the uh, fourth place. So we have four skiers out there right now. Four ladies in the front. Is it Julia Angelsjö, the last? Or is it Maria Jenne Gangsø, maybe? Uh, I am not, but I, I'm... I think maybe it's Maria uh, in the Team Nairingsbanken. Okay, partner Susan. Uh, yeah, yeah, 95 is her bib number. Yeah, so it's Maria Rene Gangsa, the Norwegian girl. It's good to have a Norwegian representative here. I would have to, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but yes, we were talking about uh, the 2019 editions. It's always good to, to point out that, of course, last year, 2020, the race was cancelled. So this particular race, uh, Clara El Sloped, hasn't been organized since uh, 2019. No. But now we are back in action again. It's, it's quite, you can see that um, the uh, Ida Palmberg here, she uh, she has uh, some small red uh, dots sticking out from her, her shorts. Uh, and that is, uh, I think, Gels. She's planning to to put in uh, at some stage of the race. Uh, to, uh, so, so she's carrying with her some uh, some snack for for the long uh, long trip. Yeah, you need gels and a lot of sports drinks for a race like this. And these type of you know these bridges are also they're really ni nice and beautiful, but you have to be careful because a wooden bridge uh, with yeah, the poles yeah. and you know spiked sometimes. So you have to take a little bit easier there. We are taking a little bit easier, but actually, it's not. Even if you are going alongside this Kara uh, Elven uh, the whole time, it's you're not passing it at many spots. I think it's one or two times you are going over a bridge. So, so uh, they are uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, keeping on the east side of the road uh, of the river, and then they are changing one time to the left uh, or to the west west side. So, uh, but. Um, on, uh, in the great scheme of things, they are they are not um, they are not um, uh, skiing over a bridge over bridges uh, many times. Not that many times. There is a one really beautiful bridge uh, later on. I think it's about like maybe twenty thirty kilometers before the finish. That is a beautiful spot when they go we'll, over. I think over we'll the river. see some uh, some nice pictures from there. But here we are in the women's race. Four it, ladies are in a bit of a breakaway there. It looks like the the girls behind her is able to close the gap now. Ida was not able to to keep the pace as high as uh, as uh, Lina was doing. So uh, now the it looks like they have eight skiers together again. I think it was four four girls chasing chasing behind. Let's see what's going to happen now when uh, Mari Rene takes the lead. No. <clears throat> she also do have these gels attached to her uh, ties. Yeah, she's pushing quite hard. Yes, definitely an increase in, in, in tempo and pace here. It'll be interesting to see how, how long they will stay together here because uh, uh, you you saw the intentions of uh, of Lina, but uh, I think also that if if Hanna is not contributing, uh, Lina does not want to use all her strengths just to, to to drag Hanna to the finish. So in some sense, I think Hanna Falk and what uh, if she is uh, interesting in 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 helping Lina with the pacemaking, they will um, uh, the pace will not be that high. It could also be that Hanna has a little bit of feeling it out. As this is the the first time that she's doing a really a long race like this. She uh, told me a couple of days ago that, of course, they've done these type of uh, exercises, workouts at the uh, training camps. So she knows what it really takes to do a 90k or even longer, longer. But to do it for real, then when you have a real race situation, is of course a different ball game. Yeah, but that's I think. Yeah, I think she's uh, she's uh, going to be. Uh, uh, she has the fastest sprint, so she's going to be a little bit. Uh, she don't doesn't need to to uh, get rid of Lina. And speaking of sprints, we have uh, sprint points here. Uh, 
in this race as well. Two of those, and we'll get to see a little bit of action there. I don't know what happened there. If it was expecting somebody to stand or or just maybe yell away here, but uh, yeah. Anyway, he looks uh, he looks really fresh and uh, enthusiastic here. So uh, this is uh, this is good skiing. Indeed, we didn't really uh, expect a breakaway like this and this early on. And of course, his name wasn't really in the cards when we uh, thought about breakaway oh, but, attempts. But you, that's, yeah, like, but that's that the beauty is, of it. That, yes, and that is what you expect that that uh, athletes not uh, uh, not uh, w w without the the most profile highest profile names they are they are the ones that are allowed to to go on breakaways this if this has been had been max novak or stian berg or andreas nigor uh, somebody of the from the field would be on their uh, back skis uh, uh, on their back skis uh, with uh, at no in, in no time so um... but naturally it goes without saying that a long race like this even the top skiers and at tend to go all guns blazing right away. I mean, you still have so many kilometers left to go. You have, you have. Want to warm up your engine a little bit. You want another, yes, yes, of course. And number 18 here at the back of the field, it was uh, Atlas Menes from Team Rusta. Uh, they have, uh, they have um, uh, Thomas Gifsta as their, uh, uh, this is their best uh, skier, and he was quite high up in Varnamarulna, I think. He's a he's a familiar face. He's been around uh, yeah. for a long time, and it's uh, I even remember that way back a few years ago. His uh, breakaway at Majalonga. Yeah, and he's all been high, <clears throat> Yeah, and he's high up in in uh, Allianzlop uh, also. So she, he he packs a good sprint. Uh, so it'll be a guy to watch out for if uh, if he's uh, in there we, when we comes to the sprint. If we think about some of these skiers, and we think about the roller skiing versus skiing on snow, the, re the real skiing, there are certain type of skiers that do really well on roller skis, but may not be as strong or powerful when it comes to uh, skiing on snow. What, in, what, what do you think that is the case for, with certain people? Yeah, in general, uh, the guys, the big guys, the powerful, heavy guys are, are better on roller skis because you you get a really, uh, you get a really, really hard, good response from the from the asphalt uh, compared to the snow, where you sink a little bit in, and and uh, uh, and when you have uh, soft conditions on skiing, it's it's uh, much more you do have do have to need uh, have a feeling, and it's also not that good to be that strong because you are you are uh, you are uh, wasting a lot of energy uh, on the soft snow, but on uh, roller ski you don't have that that problem. So fast, uh, uh, strong. Uh, heavier athletes are tend to go better on roller skis compared to skis. That is certainly the case quite often. 42, Sebastian Backlund, Iko Stern is uh, hanging in there. It's uh, interesting. It's, I don't know if they are they are here because they are just taking it easy and think that being at the back you are saving a lot of energy or if they are are here because they are struggling but um, you can see here that the, at the back of the field uh, they're go going at speeds 20 uh, at 25 to 30 k's and it, it's quite it's much easier to be uh, be uh, behind someone so uh, it's very much like in cycling so that number 18 was Adle Smenes from team Rusta IL Oslo that's an interesting team actually they yes, have we were talking skiers. about Thomas, uh, Thomas Gifta, and uh, they also have uh, Marius Varev and Amund Rige on the start line. So um, they are uh, they are four athletes here, and they will um, they will uh, it will be interesting to see if any one of those. Uh, I think that the goal Thomas is do have some um, some uh, uh, attention or can hope for. Uh, good position, but uh, it's uh, it will be exciting to see if any one of those other three guys can be uh, play a factor here. 
That remains to be seen, but we still have this guy there in a, in a wouldn't really say a safe lead, but at least an extensive lead. There's a gap between this guy and the lead group, yes. but we are quite early on, only about soon 30, 35 minutes into the, the men's race. Håkon is 28 years old, he's skiing for Bjerke IL Ski. And he's, uh, he's, like we said, on this uh, team, Næringsbanken team. Uh, those, the, the team Næringsbanken actually, uh, yesterday announced that they would, uh, they will uh, have um, signed uh, uh, Andrew Musgrave. Uh, for doing uh, and doing, the, he he will do some races for for them uh, next season. That's quite interesting because he has represented Team uh, Kuteng and in some of the races that he has done. He's a, he likes doing uh, long distance skiing. Of course, he's a World Cup skier, focusing on the uh, the uh, Olympics. Here we need to see uh, demo. We have gotten two girls. Our two expected. Favorites have gotten away from the rest of the girls. Maybe they got a little bit of a tired of the pace and decided that now it's time to go. But you see that Lina is still in the front. Uh, Hanna, I have not seen Hanna taking uh, the lead yet. But, and when Lina now is going to the side, uh, it will be really interesting to see what Hanna is doing. Will she continue and help Lina with the pace? Or is she uh, just uh, uh, going slowly or, or not wanting to take the lead at all? Then the other girls can can get back on their skis. Or will Lena force Anna to do some work as well? Because she might get a little bit tired of you know, doing all the work. Yeah, we'll it's, see. We'll see. Yeah, I think that the, you can see that the motorcycle here is, is quite uh, quite uh, near the, the girls. So... It's uh, for for Lina now. It's it's a little bit of an advantage to to have uh, somebody breaking the wind uh, before her. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, Lina is really pushing here. So uh, I think that uh, uh, it looks like she's going for the strategy of trying to to go quite hard and to 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 hope that she will have the uh, the better endurance of the two. Keeping up the high pace. Oh, yeah, is come, there two. some meters between them, or is Anna just having control? But it seems to be now. Okay, let's see this. Now they are okay. Now they are. Yeah, they are operating. Changing. Which, of course, makes sense. You know, in a race like this. Yes. Even if you are from a competing com competing uh, teams. Yeah, they are, and and I think that both of those the, them are good now. Okay, we have one and two spots secured, and we will fight it out. But I think that if Hanna is clever now, she goes a little bit slower, uh, takes a little bit shorter uh, leads, uh, and try to conserve the energy because she knows that Lina is going to try and. Get rid of her at some point, maybe not for two, three hours, but at some point she will try, and then uh, she will uh, have to re respond. And um, so basically, what you're uh, saying is that uh, Lena is probably thinking that Hannah might be a bit stronger towards the end. You know, if, there, if there's a sprint finish, she will be the yeah. one being a sprinter. But of course, after yes. 90k, like Peter Eliasson said way back, you know, when he <laughs> beat Stian Helga, well, it's different to sprint when you have 90k behind you. Yes, it is. Of course, it is. It's difficult, but I think that both of the girls expect Lina to Hanna to to win in a in a sprint. So, so, uh, but uh, but of course, nothing nothing is for certain. And Lina is also really fast. So, so it'll it'll be exciting no matter what. And we still have this guy here in a in a lead. We don't see the lead group behind him. So. Certainly, we don't have any time series. We don't really we're not able to say that you know the, how long the gap is between, or how many minutes or seconds. Yes, but at the, at Mira, the first time split it was fifty-one seconds. 
So uh, it's uh, it's a minute or something like minute that. Minute or something, yes, exactly. Right now, we can see that it's a long, when you see a long stretch like this and you don't see them behind, and you know in a minute you go at least 350 uh, meters and we don't see the, anyone out there. So it's definitely uh, more than a minute out there. Maybe we need to start the watch here at some point and uh, see if we can uh, get the peak. You can, I think we have them far back of the picture well, there. We have to wait until the next next split point. Yeah, the next split point is Munkfors and there you also have the, um, the sprint. Uh, so the Mura, you mentioned Mura at 12 kilometer split, you know, in, in the women's race, the Nanhanna, they were about 19 seconds ahead of Ida Palmberry. So, <clears throat> but speaking of the women there, I find it a bit interesting that we have a Lager 157 ski team, Hanna Falk out there, and we have, of course, Team Ramud and Lina Kuskren, but we don't have, from Lager, we don't have uh, Britta Johansson Nogren, and from Team Ramud, then we don't have Jenny Larsson or uh, uh, Ida Dahl. What do you think is maybe the reason for that? Or they just training, yeah, or they I, don't want to do all yeah, this? I, I don't know. Lina, Jenny and Ida, uh, both the two uh, Ramudden girls, they have been really, uh, really quiet this uh, summer and open. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't have any information. Uh, but uh, I expect them to train well and to, to focus on winter. Uh, some of the girl, some of the athletes don't uh, are not uh, does not want to compete in the roller ski comp competition and just focused on uh, on uh, training for the winter. So uh, and that some is, do, uh, and some do quite a lot, like Max Novak and Johannes Ekler. They even said that you know, they they use this very much like a like a training and that's if you want to listen to by the way if you guys want to listen to out there uh, our audience is a really good podcast that i did with uh, matthias reck you know the the coach of team ramudden and he talked about this he's a cycling coach from uh, team uh, uh, team trek secafredo but he's now coaching team ramudden as well and his philosophy is that you can use tr really tough races like this as as a good workout particularly when you do this back to back kind of like a block training that's what the uh, they do in the cycling world quite a lot and that's what i think uh, mark max and johannes are doing quite a lot racing many races back to back using this block you know this kind of a summer season uh, not just for racing hard but also uh, for, for for their training yes when they prepare course, for the winter so, uh... But uh, uh, in Britta johansson Nogren's uh, part, she has, she has done some races, but uh, uh, to be honest, she has been a little bit uh, off what we have uh, been seeing, been used to seeing the uh, last years. So uh, it's, uh, I don't know if uh, she's struggling with uh, any injuries or, or uh, uh, sickness, but um, uh, she has been a little bit... Uh, off her usual level uh, this uh, summer. That is true. Although we have to remember that sh she's not really um, in the past. She hasn't really performed that well in the summertime or in on roller skis. Uh, she tends to, and she has even admitted that that is not really her cup of tea per, per se. You know, oh. uh, but oh, we'll see. Course. I mean, it's uh, but it, she had a tough, tough year, tough season. Uh, you know, started. Pretty well, but then of course we all remember the uh, the injuries, the frostbites that she got from La Diagonella, just like uh, your former uh, teammate Andreas Nigord. But he was able to bounce back. Nigord then won the last last race of the season, Orefelslop, the hundred hundred kilometer race, the long one, which still is in the calendar. Yeah, yeah, it was a really interesting race. I I did it myself, and it was uh, that was. Uh, that was a really exciting and, uh, and a nice race to, to do. So uh, uh, I think that the, the athletes enjoyed it. And I think at the, at the end of the season, it was voted as the best event of the, of the season. So uh, hopefully we, it's, it's good to have it, uh, have it back uh, this year. Indeed, it is. And uh, there are going to be many long races uh, this, this season. We have that 100K, of course, 90 kilometer Vasa Lopet, much like, you know, this Claros Lopet, couple 70K races as well, 75 kilometer race, Rechenzeren in the new one. 
70 kilometer race uh, the uh, the last one that finally will getting and Marcelonga Marcelonga yes so many so so many races that are uh, long enough but that's what this sport is about a long distance skiing yeah i think that is really good that we we separate uh, long distance from regular skiing and to have uh, to have uh, races from uh, from uh, 50 and 100 k And there he goes. He's really have finding a fine rhythm here, and and uh, uh, of course he, he's uh, using a lot of energy. And I think that the guys behind there is is uh, is not doing so much, but uh, are 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 saving energy and uh, uh, compared to to Håkon, but. Um, uh, it's uh, it's really good, and I think that he is he he is enjoying himself uh, at the front of the field. And now these two ladies are going through the uh, forest parts we talked about earlier, and the, kind of this early part of the course. We have lots of nice, beautiful Vermland uh, forests before they reach the the fields and the farmlands. Uh, it looks start. yeah, it looks like uh, we have uh, the the gap has increased. It looks like this is more than uh, the 18, 19 seconds it was. Looks like we are, the camera is going to wait for as we'll start to try to start the watch. We'll see if we can be here to till they come. So you started your I watch, started, okay, good. Let's yes. see. And see, we see. can see the nice uh, sunshine too. You know, it was a bit cloudy when they started, but the sun is up there, shining. Then twenty seconds now. Years. Twenty seconds, okay. On the back there, to to the right, uh, you see Elin Moulin, uh, also former pro athlete, which uh, is a camera woman. This uh, this on this event. Let's see, 40, and we have 42 seconds, approximately. 40 seconds. These four ladies are there together. Led by uh, Julia Angerhe. Angerhe is there, and Linnea Johansson. And we have... Anna Lodin. And... Uh, Ida Palmberg, the Rambutten girl. Here we have, uh, yeah, I, 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 it looked like it was somebody action, and this is Stian Berg, uh, one of the favorites already, uh, already uh, uh, going for it. And do we have, I think it's Simon Engelbrecht's Nuli, which are the second guy here, or is it when? A lot of wind out there. Yes, fantastic. Now they are. Then it's, then these, it's, these two are now to, together, so we are, yes. didn't. Yeah. Need okay. Yes. Stian Stian. Has, uh, yes. Oh, that's it. Of course, Stian has uh, has uh, closed the gap. So that happened while we were watching the the ladies race, and of course the ladies are they started five minutes after the you know the men and then we also have the uh, recreational skiers behind the women out there as well as well but uh, this is uh, this is quite uh, surprising that uh, one of the best uh, sprinters are uh, are uh, going in the breakaway alone uh, now and and catching up with um, with hawk on uh, olden in front but that's exactly what uh, Stian did uh, two years ago, although it was a little bit later when he uh, did the breakaway. But he was, as yes, you but, said, yeah, all then, the way. Then, almost, then it was Stian Fulgoy. Now it's Stian Berg. Yes, that, that's right. That's right. So, but the Stians are, are, uh, are, uh, are good on breakaways here in Karlsruhe. Yes, that's right. You, uh, but Stian, I remember that Stian Berg won the race. But, yeah. uh, what, but what he said... Uh, that he was, um, he was actually expecting this to be and hoping this to be a, a, a sprint finish. So he, he, 
in that sense, uh, it's quite interesting that uh, he decided to to go that fast. Yeah, because before the race, really he didn't really he didn't really say that this would be his tactic. <laughs> no, no, that is uh, that is uh, <laughs> he, he was playing a little bit with the others, and I would uh, I would uh, rather expect Vettel Tilly uh, from uh, Team Kaffebrigade or Magnus Westheim to be the ones uh, doing the breakaway attempts. But he he probably he saw an opportunity and he he got the gap quite easy and nobody was following him following him and he just he thought that okay I'll just go and we'll see what happens and it's always good to be uh, uh, the good thing about being this ahead that is that maybe he's not going all in and and he can wait here for a while and hopefully he or he hoped that he can be ahead of the race and if uh, some of the guys behind there is is uh, Trying something, and um, uh, he can be caught by a group of uh, group of guys, and uh, and be uh, in the lead even um, even if he's uh, uh, without using so much energy. So uh, that will be interesting to see. And at least these two guys can now work together a little bit. Hakon doesn't have to do all the work by himself now when there are two skiers on the front. Kind of looking back, trying to see how far the chasers are. For now, I don't think that these guys are thinking that this will this will uh, be a decisive breakaway. But uh, you never know when. The, of course, you have this uh, this sprint in Munkfors. Uh, we are not that far from it, and it's uh, five thousand kroners to uh, five hundred euros to the winner. Uh, the first man, and that is maybe a little bit of an uh, motivation for these guys now to at least keep the gap till we come to Munkos. Certainly, it's also good to point out that the uh, you know the pavement is really good on this since this is a spe specialized bike path, so the pavement is really good. There's, as you can see, not that many cracks and, and holes and things like that. And, it's it's really nice. I I, I think I, I remember that I I thought about that when I was seeing this for the first time that uh, uh, you have uh, really uh, really it's it's not just uh, uh, they have not just uh, asphalted the the track but they have uh, they have uh, uh, done a really good job doing so and uh, with a good fun fundament. And actually, you need you need to do quite a lot of maintenance work on a road like this after the winters to fix it. You know, in in case there are like you can see some cracks there right yeah. now. Yeah, but uh, but for for everyone who has done uh, roller skiing, you know that uh, uh, doing it on on bad asphalt with a lot of cracks and holes, it's uh, it's unpleasant and it's dangerous. So uh, it's really nice to. Uh, for the skiers to to be able to to do this on on, on such good uh, uh, such good conditions, it's conditions like in the winter. <laughs> Just and bad away. asphalt kills the pace and you know speed as well. When I mean, you have really a a rough a rough surface, but now they have a really nice and smooth smooth one all the way through to to call start. It looks like Hawkon is quite uh, it's quite. Uh, aggressive here and takes the longest leads. So uh... still a bit of an extensive lead there. Yes, and it's uh, still almost coming quite fast and and did it uh, in a in a in a in a fast time. So uh, I think he he was going quite hard for a moment there. So he's maybe trying to find some rhythm that is not so hard. And yeah, I need to cool uh, off a little bit, you know, yeah, after that. Which is the sustainable for, for that long. I think this is a good time uh, to, since we are referring to, you know, talking about Karlstad quite a lot, and then I mentioned that it's the sort of the sunniest city in uh, in Sweden. But if you look at that, you know, it's of course in Värmland in Sweden, that's the province. Uh, the city itself had uh, almost 60. 2,000 inhabitants in 2015, then over 90,000 uh, with, with the wider municipality. 
uh, in 2017. It is actually 21st biggest municipality in Sweden. And there's a university and cathedral in that city. And then the Sweden, the, by the way, Klar Elven, you know, the, the, this river that we um, talk about and the name of the race is the longest river in Sweden. And it runs into the Sweden, Sweden's largest lake, Vanen. But uh, now I have a question for you, Tim. Do you know the name of the river in Norway? Because it's actually starting in Norway. Ah, okay. Yes, that it I... is, and it's, it's, it is called Trysil Elven in, in Norway. And then it uh, flows into Sweden, and uh, it goes into Vänern. Wow, that is a long river then. Yeah, 460k, I think. So... Uh, so um, and it's and and it's also a big uh, lake. Vänern it's the biggest uh, uh, lake in Sweden, and it's uh, it's the third biggest in the whole of Europe. So yes, uh, I know. a lot of water. I remember I remember my school days when we had to uh, learn all the four big names of the lakes in Sweden: Vätternvänern, Mälaren, and Jelmaren. I always <laughs> remember those four. <laughs> but uh, but uh, also a little bit fun fact is that now we are uh, Karlstad is on the in, on the north shores of, of Vänern, on the uh, uh, where you come to the outflow uh, in Trollhättan. Uh, you have Allianzloppe, the other, uh, other, the maybe the uh, the biggest, uh, biggest roller ski race in the world. So uh, now we are skiing on the, the north shores of Vänern, and uh, and uh, Allianzloppe is on the south shores. That is the case, and Allianzloppe it was in in August. Another exciting Maxloak race. win one surprise exactly. surprise. 48 kilometer long race. This is 90 kilometers. These two guys still, Stian and Hakon, pushing, pushing. Now we can see that we're getting a little bit of this field like yeah, terrain. You, can, you go a little bit inside into the forest. Uh, you are going uh, some have some fields into the forest again and. You're also following following this road uh, for a uh, big uh, they are, or the road is not at least that far uh, from the tracks and it's crossing it some some points and it's it's quite simple for the um, for the support staff to to be able to serve uh, serve the athletes on several spots if you have a car and in the women's race we have Lena now in the lead followed by of course, Hanna Falk, and I think it's Elin Moulin, isn't isn't she there? No, oh, she's. I think or, she's behind oh, every. This is another. I think it's a support staff from uh, from uh, staff, okay. either Ramuden or uh, rather 157, I think. So we see these uh, uh, bikers, the cyclists out there. They are, of course, service people, mainly. You know, for the uh, for the athletes. They often have they can have poles or or they can have drinks. Now they see that the, the girls were catching a boy. He was starting in the five minutes ahead of them. So uh, you see that, and he, he is no bad skier. So so you see that the the, the girls are going faster and uh, and already starting to catch up some of the men. That is the case. Mm -hmm. Now it looks and, like uh, Lena speeding up a bit. Yeah, and Lena is she is uh, at the front. Uh, we have seen Hanna up front, but it looks like uh, like we were expecting that uh, Lena is doing the most of the work and and going fast when she's she's at front. So that's probably her tactic, pretty much. You know, the kind of the wearing out. Tactic. Yeah, but I I am not sure if that is the right strategy because she is also wearing herself out. So uh, yeah, we we'll, we we'll have to wait and see some hours to see to get the get the answer. But uh, my uh, from my point of view, I would maybe I would maybe uh, not uh, do it do it in this this way. But. Um, but uh, or you have to be really strong to do it, like Peter Elias, you know, in his yeah. day. <laughs> he used that, that tactic the... quite a lot. You remember? <laughs> yes, yes, I remember. <laughs> I was, uh, I was the one suffering behind and then uh, letting go. The legendary Marcia Longa 
2019 was it or 2018 maybe that was uh, that was uh, impressive yes to say you know, the least. pretty much all the work and still won the race but these two are also working together a bit getting to that second split time spot very it soon seems, it seems like uh, these two are going to be first and second here or are uh, it's not enough uh, they have been skiing for one hour now and uh, the sprint should be at 27k so uh, i expect them to be there in uh, in boya yeah. there they are <laughs> here, here they are let's see who's going to take home that prize money you talked about yeah it's 5000 for first and it's 3000 or 300 euros for second so they are uh, they are guaranteed money both of them Now this car has to move, but I think I think they have control. Oh, there yeah, they it, come. I, it looked like it looked like uh, like uh, Hawkon is uh, having trouble with his uh, yes. pole. Yeah, he, he has several right. times lifted his uh, his right arm. Could be the uh, could be the spike as well. Spike. You know, that maybe, yeah, uh... I think maybe it is the spike, and that is and often it can be a little not. Not completely broken, but uh, it didn't look like it was a huge problem, but uh, but um, uh, just a little bit uh, worn or, or uh, damaged. So uh, exactly. he, it was good to have that changed, I think. And that is a huge difference between uh, skiing on snow and on asphalt. The, the, the spikes, you have to have really sharp you know, spikes. And for a long race like this, you know, when you have 90K, so that even if you start with the really sharp ones they might wear out as you said yeah and it's uh it's also uh, they can uh, that is actually a, 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 a tips for for the recreational skiers that uh, you sharpen the the edges of the spikes uh often because uh, if you're struggling with the sore elbows or or anything like that you it's uh, you're getting so uh beat up by the by the hard uh, hard uh, surface so so to have uh, a sharp uh, spikes you are not uh, you're not uh, you don't need to to um to push the spikes that hard and the poles that hard into the ground and and uh, it can save uh, it can save your elbows a little and in the fall time you know that it becomes a extremely important as the weather gets colder the the, the surface the you know pavement gets harder as well in the summertime when you have a warm weather it tends to be much easier and the, the, even the asphalt is softer that's but, a really good point and the leading guy and at the leading guys but the chasers are there these yeah, are the, the leading guys the field, yeah the back of the field there was uh, number 35 antoine Ocher from team nordic experience uh, french team which have uh, uh, three uh, starters here, Arnaud de Pasquier and Thomas Joly, in addition to, to Auger. So uh, that is cool to have uh, French participation here. Now oh, they're good skiers. They sort of a solid performances out there. And they've uh, before they joined Visma Ski Classics, now pretty much full time with their team. They did quite a lot of the the skating races and also the uh, the other marathon. Oh, they the FIS Marathon Cup and uh, many World Loppet races and did here, really well, you know, those guys. Here, I think we are nearing the sprint. We are going into Munkfors. Let's yes, see if we they are. are... Oh. They looked like it was just Håkon was, who was allowed to take that. Stian wasn't uh, challenging him, challenging him, him at all. Maybe now it we'll was a little bit distance. of yeah. Maybe it was a little bit of a tactic from uh, from Sion uh, to to just let uh, let uh, Håkon have it as a little bit of a, uh, payment for 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 doing all that work. So Munk first uh, 27 kilometers, and their the Håkon's time was one hour, three minutes, and 20. Six seconds. And you see that right. they have had 26 or something kilometers average, average speed uh, for that the first hour. That is a fast pace. Yeah, it's going fast. Going fast. 
and we'll see the difference for the moon, the gap. I didn't start the words, but we'll get it on the... We'll get it very soon. There they come. Yeah. Huge group. It's uh, it's the interesting to see who is doing the work at front here, but then it's also 2,000 for uh, 200 euros for uh, for third place here. So it's still uh, some money to be earned here. So it's yeah. It yeah, there's like a bit of a spin here. Yes. yes, here that is. Yes, exactly. Uh, the bull Andreas Nygård is uh, is uh, taking the third position. There was Petter Nortug. He was uh, safely in the bunch. And here you have the support bicycles. Some of them with poles. Yeah, let's see the uh, zoom. Okay, now we get the one minute and 24 seconds. Andreas Nigor, then Klaas Nilsson, and Halvor Gorböl Toner. You know these Norwegian names yes. better than I do. Yeah, yeah, you are, you are good, that ever. You are good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but the, you see that the gap has grown. It was it was uh, they were still the most of the guys are still together, but uh, but. Uh, the pace of the first guys is still a little bit higher than than behind. So uh, at some point somebody has to do something, and you know that it will not be Team Nighting Spunkin and it will not be Team Kaffebrigia. No, that is the case. Pretty soon they have uh, negotiated the one third of the race. This particular uh, spot, Munkfors, as I said, is 27 kilometers into the race. It will be also the start of the 60k event because you can, if you're not, uh, if you don't want to do the whole 90k, uh, you can uh, you can do uh, you can start here in Mungfors for for 60k or you can start in Forshaga for a 21k event. It's also been a running uh, a half marathon starting in Forshaga with Molly in, uh, with finishing Karsta. Yes, there's a many events and races over the weekend. You mentioned that uh, cycling race yesterday, and now we have the roller skiing. And these two guys are still in the lead. When, when, you, get in, when you get into these uh, these cities, uh, Munkbosch here, it's it's one of the biggest uh, throughout the course. But you, that that is uh, the the. Um, the, the course is quite mountainous, but uh, but when you get uh, into the city, it's, it's all uh, often more twisting and turning. You're having some uh, some cro road crossings. Uh, you have to be a little bit more aware uh, of um, of uh, where you are going uh, when you get into these cities. And uh, uh, I remember that uh, some of these uh, these uh, places uh, towards the finish or second half of the race, you it's uh, it's some the most technical part, it's uh, parts of the race are there. Some twisty, twi some sharp bends, and uh, things like that. And of course, towards the end, you know, the last last kilometer is very uh, well, very technical. But of course, there's a bridge that you go over, and you have to be very careful there. And yeah. you're getting ready for a sprint finish in many <laughs> cases. I, I remember that. I think that it's quite funny this race that you have uh, 90 k's that are almost completely. Uh, straight ahead, and then you have the most the diff most difficult turn on the whole course is one and a half k from the finish. So uh, that is uh, <laughs> that is uh, a little bit funny, but uh, I, I understand that they when you want to have the finish uh, in the in downtown Karlsta, you do need to to negotiate uh, some uh, some t twists and turns to to get there. And it is indeed in a downtown area, right in the center walking distance from uh, from everywhere in the city. And these two ladies continue the cat and mouse game out there. Lina Koskren. Lina Koskren still lead. in front. I don't know if the producers are are uh, are just picking out the, the times when, when Dina is in front, but, uh, but uh, if uh, they do not, uh, uh, I, I, like I said, I think Hanna is smiling behind her, uh, and this is at least her her best shot of uh, of beating Lina. This of is uh, is just staying on her back uh, back wheels and 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 hope that she's 
uh, using more uh, more energy than uh, she does. But we all remember how tough Lena can be. You know that last year's Vasalop it was a good example uh, because it's pretty much like this with uh, Marit Jürgen uh, all the way through until she uh, sped up a bit towards the end and was able to you know create that gap. Yeah, this, you know, this that was about forty seconds. You know. The season, so uh, season which um, which uh, Lena had was uh, was uh, really really impressive. And, uh, she uh, she uh, made herself the queen of long distance skiing, taking over from uh, legendary Britta Johansson Norgren. And the whole team, we have to remember that the whole team performed so well. And and Jenny Larsen started the the season really well by winning and and then Ida was strong throughout the season yeah Jamuden was uh, was fantastic and uh, and uh, especially the girls especially the girls but now it'll be interesting to see how the guys can do because both Johannes Eklöf and Max Novak you know they performed really well and uh, what's amazing about Max's performance is that he actually broke his ribs earlier you know in, in the spring and he had to take a break for two months, or maybe that is the case. You know, that he had to take a break a little bit yeah, after the yeah, season, that is, and then uh, start it, really, really uh, hard training. It will be really interesting to see. Uh, see the uh, you can. I, I remember uh, for three or four years ago, Anders Mölman Höst had a really exceptional roller ski season. He was often good at roller skis, but he he won the Guide World Classic Tour and and was really strong. And but when it came to the winter, he didn't have his best season. And uh, two years ago, uh, Andrew Musgrave uh, did the same. He was uh, uh, untouchable on roller skis uh, and won many of the big races, or was at least there. Uh, but he did, he did, he he actually did have a, have a casca, catastrophe um, uh, season. So uh, uh, it's. Um, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Mox uh, is able to to maintain that level he has had in the summer throughout the winter. Yeah, the question is that you can't peak too early. No, uh, we'll see. Yeah, he 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 told us that he was finally getting into shape uh, on the press conference here some days ago. So uh, so uh, if that is the case, uh, and he is he's stronger now than he was in in Top of the or in uh, or in Allianz Top, but this is going to be. Uh, it's going to be difficult to, uh, to beat him. It's always fun to speculate, but I think he will be really strong uh, this winter season as well. Um, I was looking at some of the results from um, uh, Hanna Falk this, um, uh, the, the, the last year, because she is coming from... from uh, from distance skiing or and uh, and actually being a sprinter and uh, she did her last uh, last World Cup races on home turf in uh, in Ulricehamn uh, in February where she where she was uh, actually fourth uh, so uh, it's she she was she was um, uh, quitting uh, on top you could say on top but she also had a lot of problems uh, uh, you and speaking of her, you can also go and listen to our podcast with Hannah Falk. And there she uh, tells, you know, told us about uh, these problems that she had, uh, back problems mainly uh, last season. It was a tough, tough winter for her. And then that kind of idea of uh, stepping into the, uh, this arena uh, came about, you know, when she was struggling and, and so forth and decided to give it another try and uh, particularly in long distance skiing and she has performed really well so oh, now, so far. Have sprint. now we they are coming to the same place monk first let's see they want to definitely get uh, yeah yeah Anna they are going definitely wants it. to show that she's a sprinter yeah. but lena's not giving an inch oh. look at that look at that really tight fight there oh no how nice yes, to but, it. yes but anna is now i, I was 30. i was not... I was going to say that uh, it will be interesting to see if if uh, if they are going for the sprint or just uh, splitting it equally. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think if Lina, if she has done almost all the work and then Hanna goes in front for the sprint, it's uh, uh, it can be a bit annoying and uh, or annoying, but at least uh, uh, I maybe thought that they could have been doing some deal or at least Hanna was 
was uh, going behind to to, uh, to give it to Lina because she had done the work. But uh, here they are fighting uh, tooth and nails also for the first sprint. They definitely are tooth and nail, and the money is money. <laughs> it is, it is. So, but you see now when when Hanna is going to the front, the the, the pace are dro is dropping. Of course, and I think this is her tactic now. A little bit, she pushed quite hard there to get that first spot, and uh, now she's uh, she wants to slow down a bit. But I think they both want to do this a little bit, make sure that they get a, get the sustenance there, drinks and energy. Yeah, it looks like the nice. Now letting uh, Anna. Be in, be in the front. She does. Uh, they came to Munkfors in one oh eight fifty three. This they are five and a half minutes behind the boys. If you just to compare, it's uh, it's. Uh, I'd say it's a fast pace too. You for for them. Yes, it is, and they they are only two skiers, uh, uh, and without the. Uh, Ian and uh, Håkon in the front of the men's uh, race are are really uh, are are going for it and has more, more intention to keep the pace than, than those uh, these two girls. Now we'll see who get third position in the in the sprint for for uh, for the ladies. Ladies, but here this is an interesting uh, part because. We now you we see have that, uh, uh, recreational, recreational skiers. There, yes, exactly. and they they have caught up with the with the girls. And here actually we could have um we can have a resurgence of some of the you saw two of the girls there, and and they uh, they can actually now uh, be able to catch up with Lina and Hanna again. Well, at least get some help from these guys. That's exactly what I said earlier when this race has started, that it'll be interesting to see if anything like this happens because the recreational skiers, there are some really good, good skiers there and they have a chance to use really fast skis as well. And I think that's what happened two years ago when you guys raced that someone used like really fast skis and it was actually in the lead for a while. Uh, and in the uh, and the the amateur, group. but uh, but that is a really interesting point that this can actually the guys we were seeing now through the sprint, they were starting five minutes behind or ten minutes. That's yes. correct. Yes, I think I think and, that's the case. Yeah, and now they are just uh, one and a half, two minutes behind, uh, and that is that is they are going to if they continue they will uh, they will catch up uh, with Hanna and and uh, Lina and i think that is um, to, to Lina's advantage that uh, she could maybe get some some guys to to go with and to keep the high, and help her high, keep the pace high that is uh, that is the case because she has done that so many times uh, for example the Vasa Loco we just talked about you know that's what what happened there you know when she was able to to gain that gap over uh, Marit Björgen, that was exactly what happened. The, the guys caught up with them, and she was able to get a little bit of a you know draft, you know, from those guys and break away from uh, Marit Björgen. Yeah, and you see here that it's it's two seventeen, so they had closed half the half of the gap on the, from the first twenty seven k's now, and you see that uh, that uh, Hanna now is going a little bit slower, so. Uh, you could expect that the guys behind there will will catch up and and um, and uh, try to uh, uh, and c could play an an part of of uh, the finale for the girls. Uh, behind there, you saw that Linnea Johansson was the girl. Uh, the, there were there were three girls there in in the in this uh, among the boys. She was the the girl in third place. Uh, no, sorry, four, four girls um, together there in with together with the uh, recreational skiers. And Linnea Johansson was third and took the last 200 then euros. Julia Angelsjö and Ida Balmberg. And Hanna Lodin was also there. Exactly. And here we have the guys. We do. From behind. Atlas Menes uh, still at the back bunch. Together with number 43, uh, that is uh, Mikael Eklöv from Team Sips. 
I'm not sure if he's uh, the brother of uh, of Johannes. Um, I was thinking about the same, but don't know for sure. No. Okay, look at that. Looks like uh, some action is happening with these two guys. If they trying to speed up again a little bit. They get a message, you know that. Well, this is also a good, good technique lesson, you know, for for the uh, viewers out there. You can look at these pro team athletes and their techniques, and get some tips there. See how the double polling is really done. It may look very simple, but as we know, I mean, it's not that simple to go fast. No, it's 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 not that hard to be quite be, become quite good. But it's uh, like in all sports, it's it's uh, the last percent percent. They are uh, they are really they are the toughest. So uh, uh, it's uh, of course to be to be to be going roller ski and to be it's hard. But it's it's uh, uh, to the difference between the good and the best. It's uh, it's not much, but it's still a huge difference. And you can of course, see that, it's like you can see that the poles here, the spikes of the poles, are are hitting the ground uh, beside or nearly beside the, the front wheel, and that is really good that you get your or spikes far ahead. Uh, you can see that it's a little bit different here. Stian is is a little bit longer longer uh, um, longer uh, ahead with his poles and get a little bit longer stride. Uh, and he's also a little bit long, um, more forward, more forward with his hips. So uh, I would say that Stian is maybe going a little bit more energy efficient than than Håkon is doing. It could be that Håkon is getting a little bit tired as well, and he's been in in this lead, you know, for quite a long time. Yeah, and, it's, mm. and he's he does not all have the Palmaris uh, like Stian does uh, either. So uh, we are we are expecting Stian to be be the strongest of these two. And uh, a course like this, uh, it's, a, it's completely flat, but it is a tough, you know. I always remember talking to uh, Tor as a Yedalen, who said, you know, yeah, well, but the, the uh, tough courses or flat courses are often the, the, the hardest because you don't really get any kind of rest. And when you climb, you always tend to have a downhill yes. and a recovery. It but it here, is. you don't really have any. And that's quite out. Quite often, when the uh, the walk up skiers, the standard distance skiers, come to long distance skiing, say that it's the, it's a, it's like extensive double poling, not just the length of it, but the the continuous double poling effort that you need to put in. Yes. Uh, it's kind of overwhelming to them sometimes that yeah. you don't get that much rest, you know. And the downhills are pretty fast, and you even have to go. I mean, in downhill sections, even like much longer, you have to pull and push so hard. You have you, you. It's it's true. So so that is uh, and I, when you say it's completely flat, it also is a little bit of an uh, exaggeration because uh, towards the end uh, you have uh, after you finish the last checkpoint at Edskatan, uh, there is a, a, a some. Part there are with, some hills, uh, yes. Yeah, right. some hills yes. or at least some false flats, which are are quite demanding. And and after 80k, I think that uh, Max Novak has has looked at the profile and thought that uh, think uh, thinks about if I'm feeling good, I will try something there. So uh, that is going to be interesting to see. That is true. There are some um, some tiny hills there uh, towards the end, but of course. Uh, this is often called, you know, the Vasalopet on roller skis, but uh, compared to, to Vasalopet, uh, there are, I mean, as you know, I know all of, uh, all of us know, at least the ones that have done the race, that there's always a climb. That's why they're baddies, you know, they go, Ries baddie, Evitz baddie. It's always a climb before a feeding station. Mm. Uh, but over here, it tends to be quite flat all the way through to that point that you just uh, told us about. But uh, but also uh, in, uh, in uh, Vasalopet, if you... If you are expecting Vasalopo to be flat, it's quite hilly. It's uh, it is it's, it is it is it is flat in in uh, in some parts of the some some sense of the word or or if you are or or have the have the view of it being uh, being really hilly and compared to Birkin, it's 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 flat. But uh, 
but it's still a lot of uh, height difference and uh, and compared to to Klarhelsloppe, Vasaloppe is a really hilly race. It is, and it, that's the that's the common misconception of Vasaloppe that it is actually a lot of people, at least over here in Finland, tend to think, oh, it's just flat. And I've taken a lot of skiers out there and like. Wait a minute! I thought this is completely flat, but there's so many climbs here, and they get completely surprised by the fact that there are many climbs, and there are some long ones. The first one, of course, is the famous one—a uh, 2.5 kilometer climb all the way to the top. And if you go it, uh, by the way, if you go it the other way, then it's really tough. Yes, yeah, so you've you done it both ways. Yes, I've done it both ways, and I can tell you that it's—it is really tough when you go that way. <laughs> um. You can see that almost uh, like we talked about the drinking belt, uh, they are uh, they are um, still uh, they are almost everyone is using it, uh, and that was actually an an, in, or an invention or at least an uh, an um, a thing that uh, Tour de was uh, was the first one of to to use because uh, before they had this drink ordinary drinking belts with a with a bottle. Uh, on the back, and you had to take it, uh, take it up, and and uh, drink from. But now with this uh, drinking system, with a drinking bag or and a hose, uh, it's much easier to to drink small soups all the time. Uh, that was that was uh, invented or at least introduced to the pro tour with uh, Tour in the... He's a bit of an innovator. That's yeah. what he does. Also the long poles. That was something that he brought into the, yeah. into the picture. Of the, course, the FIS rules has not kind of killed that a little bit, you know, the, the longer poles, but uh, that, that was something that he also told the team about that we should use longer poles. And at one point, they even used the uh, skating poles. I think Petrelli has used even uh, skating poles. Although, I think but... in Birke uh, the, 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 the in March, it was the, one of the last races before this... this uh, Rules, uh, pole length rules from FIS came. Uh, he was doing Birke with 170 long poles, and he he is a guy on in, uh, 180 long. So he was, <laughs> it was uh, really, really long. long. <laughs> it was in 20, the Birke in 2016, I think. And here we have this section of the course. We can see the looks like the asphalt is a little bit um, older here. And it also looks complex. like Hanna is uh, now uh, doing much more of the work. I don't know if Lina, uh, she realized that she was not able to get rid of uh, Hanna, uh, or if she saw that in the sprint that Hanna was so strong that she this is not working, I have to change the strategy. Uh, or maybe if she she realized that okay there are boys coming from behind, maybe she has been told that and she can I will just wait for them them to come. Uh, but uh, something has changed. That is uh, for sure. Or maybe she just get got angry with Anna that uh, she was uh, beating her in the sprint. And, uh, okay, Could be, then, and then you will take it a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah. We'll Interesting. Of course, when you only have the, the two skiers out there, you have a little bit of room for uh, different tactics. When you have a bunch of guys uh, together, you know, it tends to be uh, more hectic up there. And you, but when you just have two skiers, you can even you can even talk to each other a little bit, you know, and and sometimes you know come up with a with a kind of a common strategy. Yes. I don't know if they are really doing that. Well, they're both from Sweden, so it's easy to communicate there. That's that's for sure, but I I think they are uh, I think they are um, they are not uh, cooperating that much, and I think that uh, these two are fighting for for the win here in Kladaslop. It's a prestigious win. It's it's a lot of prize money, fifty thousand kroner or five hundred five thousand euros. It's it's like the same in in much of the winter races. So so this is uh, this is. Uh, uh, an important win, and uh, and I don't think any one of those, uh, or, uh, both of them are are um, are in the competition mode mode now. 
and they know that they are, the girls behind them will not be able to catch them. Un unlike these two guys know that they have a really strong guys behind them. Yeah. These two need to work together yeah. if they want to keep this this gap. Yeah, and they and they I think that uh, they are not believing that this is they are going to win this the race now. They are just. Uh, uh, just uh, going hard and, and see what happening happens, but they don't expect anything to, uh, at least for now, uh, they expect to win. But uh, but Lina and Hanna, uh, they are, they know that uh, this race is between them. That is the case, and a little bit of a nature look there. You, these cows are wondering who the hell are these guys going on on, on our, <laughs> invading our territory. Or maybe they are they are used to seeing roller skis and bicycles uh, going past, so they are cheering a little bit. A little I move. think they are. But these guys, they don't have time to look around and enjoy the uh, the scenery. Which of course is a big thing about long distance skiing, be it of summer skiing or uh, winter skiing, is the scenery around. That's why people do these things. <laughs> Look at that. That's a, <laughs> you know, it, the... uh, I don't know who is this. Is it maybe the lead car, which are, are somebody who's trying to take some pictures of uh, uh, photos of the skiers. And now you can see that this pike path goes really close to the road. We had uh, we had uh, like I said in been on the on the east side of uh, of the Clara Elven uh, for some for the most part, uh, and uh, we will still be that for for still some k some kilometers uh, all the way till we come to Daie up to fifty six kilometers we will we will pass over to the to the west side of the, of the river. That is the river we talked about earlier. The what 400 and something kilometers long, Klar El Elven, which then starts. And what uh, is the name Demo, of the Norwegian? Or was it part? something Trusil Trusil? Yeah, correct. Tri Trusil Elven. <laughs> exactly. The name of the river. And uh, look, now it's uh, Lee now again. Well, at least working. Somewhat in unison there. Yeah, it's a long time since we've seen Lina in in front. So uh, this is uh, they are at least sharing some of the burden now. And but uh, you can see that uh, uh, it is not the same pace as it was before the sprint in Munkfors. It's uh, they are going uh, much slower now, and I expect that the the, the recreational skiers, the, the elite with the faster skis, uh, uh, men's uh, race there, who started five minutes uh, behind these girls, are going to catch up now in not that long. Indeed, you know, when we call them recreational skiers, maybe that that's not the oh. not the suitable name for it, you know, because some of them are love, you know, elite Wait. skiers or semi, you know, uh, what we call them professional, but really good skiers, older skiers, maybe fast ones, and particularly on fast skis, they can go really, really with a high tempo and really fast. In in Sweden, they have this word elite motionad, uh, and that is uh, that is a good uh, good name for them. Yes, that is a good name. There's not really a name like that in English. Uh, elite. You can't really call them elite amateurs, you know. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe you can. Yes. Here you see that uh, if the, if we had uh, had some wind today, it could uh, in these parts play uh, play a, play a role. And uh, it was uh, the wind is coming from the east. Uh, and that is uh, it is uh, side wind. It's coming from the riders' um, uh, left here, uh, the riders' uh, skiers, uh, and that is um, that is really uh, uh, it can play a big part. And if uh, it's really on, on cycle, you have this um, uh, what is it called? Vifta uh, shape. It's uh, uh, 
uh, you are going beside each other a little bit. You are going on the left or right side uh, of the rider in front of you um, to to be to get into the sh shield of the wind. Uh, but on roller skis, because of the poles, it's it's not it's not possible to do this uh, this uh, when when the side when the wind comes from the side. So then it's it can be almost uh, if it, if it, the wind is strong, it's it's really difficult to to have any any um, uh, to have any gain at all of being uh, back in on the back side of uh, uh, back wheels. Yes, and side wind side wind can be really tricky. You know, as you said, if it's a heavy heavy side wind, you know, with the poles and everything, it's uh, it's not of course as as uh, hard as as a headwind, but it can certainly turn out to be a a tricky force to to beat. You have, we had a picture there of Julia Angersha. Uh, I don't know what was uh, maybe she uh, she was the last girl of uh, of the, um, of the uh, who was able to or she had been like looked like she was being dropped from the from the men's uh, uh, recreational skier group there. Uh, exactly. I mean, she was there the, together with Linnea and Ida. Uh, when they passed the Munkfors yes, checkpoint, she was. So it will be. We'll have to see about that when they come to the next checkpoint. But uh, uh, and also they have passed uh, the next checkpoint here in uh, in uh, uh, Ran Ra Ra Seter, 37k, uh, and there. Uh, it looks like uh, it was Hermann Paus and Johannes Eklö. Uh, they passed were first in the in the uh, bunch behind at 52 seconds. So the gap has been shrinking a little bit now. Uh, and they are two Ramudan guys. They I think that Max Novak has told them that uh, you have to go up and work. We need to to catch these two guys uh, in front now. And Hermann Paus is that young recruit that uh, Gustav Kosgren signed uh, l last year he uh, had a pretty good season you know and, and he's definitely one of the one of the rising stars could be uh, and uh, Gustav the team leader has a uh, high hopes for him for next yes season as yes well. with, with uh, he has had, had a really good uh, development uh, from uh, in these past two years so uh, and with his young age he's he has all every Every possibility to become a great long distance skier. Look at this, a bit of a gap there. Is it just yeah, uh, it, that he's taking a jail? Is, yes, Lena taking is taking a jail. Yeah. That is clever. Clever to, to, to keep uh, fed and keep hydrated. Was that maybe the timing uh, for the girls to pass this same? Yeah. I don't know, but uh, at least the guys uh, from the last checkpoint at 37k, the Bergen Holden was uh, was in front, and and it looks like Team Ramudn is uh, trying to have uh, up the pace in the bunch. Exactly. Look at that. Lena has that gel in in her mouth, you know, holding with the teeth. That can be kind of tricky too, you know. When you have a high tempo, you don't really have a spot where you can just take a, take a moment to to swallow it and no, or yeah, drink your drink. It's it's usually you have downhills, like you can where you can have small breaks, but because of the because the race is, race is so flat, it's um, it's uh, often uh, good to uh, 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 or it's more difficult to to uh, to get uh, both drinks and and gels uh, inside your system. And also, we have to remember that these uh, zones nowadays that we have these no litter zo zones. Uh, you basically need to carry your. You can't just throw it out. Either you carry it with your teeth, like Lena, Lena did, or you put it in your pocket or somewhere there, and 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 then bring it to the uh, the litter litter zone. Yes, and that's what she was doing. She just uh, actually was able to swallow the gel, but had it in her teeth all the way to the you know the feeding station zone. And it's also if you are not uh, these girls are not going that uh, fast now. So, but when you are really tired, if you're if it's going fast, it's also really difficult to to eat and drink. And uh, and then I have been in those situations sometimes that you are taking a gel or 
or you know that you need this gel and you're really tired or, or um, uh, short of breath and uh, and you have to carry it for a long time like she did in your mouth or or, or taking small small sips uh, to be able to to get it down because uh, everyone can, can go out try to be to run fast as they can and then try to drink something while they while they're doing it it's it's not easy that is tough when you're completely out of breath and you need to you know, try to drink or you know just stuff something in your mouth <laughs> is it the group behind there which with the guys who are coming i think so there are some people there it's a little bit difficult yeah. to say yeah but that. it's uh, it must be them it must be the, these groups so, uh, so this question is if any one of the girls have been able to to follow them but i suspect maybe that that Julia Angelsjö was was the last of the girls who were able to who had to let go some minutes ago of this group. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And at the same time, we'll see the situation in the men's race. Here we have the boys in the main bunch. Oh, oh Johannes Eklo there was nearly going down. That was yeah, like you say. All right. You see, you see here that it's Kafvit was Vettel Tyli who was going in front to try to to break the the speed of the of the race, and then Johannes had to go in the middle and go to the front to increase the pace again because uh, that is the case when 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 Kaffe Brigeri has won in front, and if uh, uh, his teammates are uh, you can say rude or or uh, uh, offensive, they are trying to break into the 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 lead uh, uh, lead athletes and and slow the pace when they get into the, to the front so that is that has been done many times these uh, in these races before tactical and also maneuvers in, yes, tactical maneuvers, yes, it's tactical maneuvers it, and it's it's it, it is not maybe the uh, you are not getting any friends uh, in the bunch by doing it uh, and at least for those by those who are trying to chase, but it's not uh, it's not illegal. It's not illegal, and that's what the team Kuteng did, you know, at Basel a bit a few years ago when Bedal won. Yes. It's a really nice tactical maneuver. Maybe not good for you guys, the no, other that guys. Was but... the one trying to chase <laughs> chase him, <laughs> but uh, so not for me. But uh, but it's 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 legal and it's uh, it's allowed. But it's uh, like you see now. When 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 uh, Johannes now is finished with his uh, his job, he will go to the side. And if it's a coffee brigadier guy here now uh, at the front, it is. I think it's West Manus Westram, is it? They no, are just going. Say, yes. Yeah. Now it's. Are they plucking now? They are just going slow. I think this is Simon Engebrexen Oli now, and he has Hokon in front. Oh no, she he's trying to to break away. Yes. Okay, yes. He's going no. now. This is Simning Brixnuli. Well, sometimes you have that individual you know gain in mind as well. So but Yes, but I think he he's he's either he's he's slowing the pace or he can try to break away. Because now when you when you when you have this uh upping the high pace he will when he get caught he get uh, is caught now he will just go out to the sides and the pace will drop again and in and that will the, the average speed will not be that uh, high when they are doing it like this <laughs> there well, this guy's struggling a little bit there it was Johan Kanto uh, from Jeteborg ski club he was <laughs> he was tired looked like now we have Magnus Westheim here, like we said, and it's Kasper Stados, Team Ragda uh, He won Allianz Loppe some years ago, and it's a really good skier in a sprinter. A new recruit for the team. Yes. You know, that's a, once again, really strong, that team. Uh, and then we have yeah, Stian Hulgård. He uh, do not need any further introduction. And we have Steven Engebrexen Oli. It's a really strong group there, but it looks like uh, this is the case when you are we strong riders and breaking away they are not allowed to go the, all the other guys are saying oh this is dangerous we have to follow and then the gap is uh, closed that is um, that is uh, why we often see these uh, 
this um, when you are getting stronger uh, you had you Tela before he was all, almost uh, or very often doing breakaways but when he the problem is that when he get, is better he is uh, he is try he is not uh, being allowed anymore to to go on these long breakaways and that was number 16 there as well Amund Rige from team Rust EL Oslo And Stian Hölgard, as you said, you know, a strong, strong skier. He was the one who was in a breakaway two years ago. But we have to remember that he's a, certainly a Vassalopet skier. I mean, this he, this winter wasn't really his best performance at Vassalopet. But before that, uh, he had five consecutive po podium places at Vassalopet. So that is a pretty impressive one. And then two years ago, of course, we remember when he and... He yeah. and the Petrelias then approached the finish line, and everybody was kind of thinking, "Well, finally, now it's Dian's turn." Here we but... have uh, now we have Etletili also coming here. Like you said, Amon Rige. This is a really dangerous group. If they can, uh, if they can work together now, uh, and it's number eight. It is Klaus Nilsson, maybe I think that is uh, first now. Uh, this is uh, this is really dangerous, and and for the athletes behind now. Uh, they are they are seeing this and they are thinking oh I should be there I I should have been there uh, in front but uh, uh, we'll see Max Novak uh, Andreas Nigor uh, yeah uh, are they um, uh, they are they are thinking that uh, this is a dangerous move yes that's what I was thinking that begs the question where are they and what are they going to do. While we are it's, it's, looking, yeah. The question, these the question, guys. Yeah, the question is if uh, I don't think Ramudan had any any guys in front when they if they don't they they will be able to do the work behind and try to catch up, but it's not easy with this uh, with these strong guys going full gas. And as you mentioned earlier, they are now catching up. That the gap was. Uh, 124 at Munkfors, but now it was only uh, it was less than a minute, 52, it was 52 seconds. So yeah, and also the, the girls uh, girls have passed this point at uh, Ransetter, and uh, Julia Angersjö was only 119 behind uh, behind Hanna and Lina. So like we said, we saw in the last picture that the guys are are um, the girls are are catching up with Lina and, um, and uh, Hanna again. So uh, it's very interesting to see in the next picture if they are they have been uh, caught. So let's see who do we have in this particular group. Yeah, it's Yvette Tili, and you have Simon Engebrexen Noli, Klaus Nilsson, then, Stian Holgård, Amund Rige. And, and who is the last one there? Uh, that is Kasper Stados. Yes, the Stados, yes. yes. These are the guys. Really interesting, but we have no really? Amudin, so that is that is going to ensure that the pace here behind is is going to be really high, and uh, and, uh, and now some of these uh, some of you like you said you want Kanto so you want Kanto um, uh, for some time ago now now they are struggling a bit, and we assume that Max Novak. Eklöf, Johannes Eklöf, and uh, Nigord, Andres Nigord are in the lead group somewhere out there, but of course they need to do something at some point. Here you see, here you see the boys have caught up with uh, Hanna and Lina. Yes. Uh, but the question is if there are any other girls uh, in the row here behind. But uh, uh, that is, uh, I expect them to, to drop off when the, when the pace increases. Like, Increases again, but uh, this is this is changing the girl the race drastically for the for the girls. This is definitely a change in the game plan. And now Hanna, you see that Hanna is has uh, has been uh, is in on the back wheels of of uh, Lina, and she needs to be aware of not getting too many skiers behind her and Lina. Uh, so uh, she will be uh, she will be uh, I think she will she is going to be glued to the wheels of Lina Koshkin now for many kilometers. And these guys keep pushing really hard. They're trying to catch up those two 
Breakaway guys. It looks the like the gap is around 15 seconds or something like that. It's not uh, it's not that big any uh, yet, but uh, uh, it's uh, this is not ideal for Max Novak uh, to have uh, have a race situation like this. And if if uh, it, it depends on how strong Johannes and Max uh, on uh, Hermann Paus is, uh, because they are only two guys, and here they are eight, seven guys uh, going full gas. So. Um, yeah, it's uh, maybe Max do need to have to do some some work on it of his own because Andreas do have Kasper Stados here, so I don't think Andreas Nigor will do any work. That is a good point. That in a, uh, now in this group we have eight skiers. It's a big difference uh, to the to the two people teams that we have uh, have had so far, like the uh, the guys in the end and also in the in the women's group you know when you have eight skiers working together you know that tends to be a create a much more you know the pace and and um, they can work together much better than uh, two guys can yeah, and also the the, the the faster pace makes it easier to go behind so so the the, the draft effect is it's much it's higher than here in in uh, on roller skis than in an order in a skiing event so so it's um so it's it's more useful to to share the work uh, uh, between between more skiers. Well, I think this is pretty much as you said. You know that the, these two ladies waited for the guys, these guys, to catch up and take a little bit of a draft from there, and that was the case. And that's why uh, uh, Julia was able to catch up. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm not sure if Yula is still uh, is still. Uh, but we we had a picture of her. Uh, I don't think she's there yet. No, but I, don't, I think she, she had yeah. to to let go of this uh, the this group. But she but, definitely uh, uh, killed the you know the gap. You know, it was like over two minutes at one point, and I was it was only a minute and what nineteen seconds. Yes, but that, I think she was with the with the boys at that time. So we'll have to wait to see when they come to the next checkpoint to get. Uh, yeah, it could uh, change pretty drastically now that if. But the, but uh, the boys uh, now uh, went through the forty-seven k uh, split at Edeby, uh, and there Armin Rige, like we said, was first together in the group with Magnus Westerheim, Klaus Nilsson, Kasper Stados, Stian Holgor, Betle Tyli. And Simon Engebrexen Oli, and the gap down to Max Novak, who was the first in the lead group, was 20 seconds. 20 seconds, okay. And, uh, and he was two seconds behind Petter Schuling Schinsta. So I think now, actually, what we have is that Max Novak is seeing that this group cannot, uh, we cannot let this group go. And uh, he is chasing. And also, we had on 12th position, Petter Nortug was there. So uh, he is uh, he is still hanging in there, and he's quite far. Uh, he is uh, he's on the, in the uh, in the first part of the chasing group. So uh, yeah, and you see behind there that uh, they are catching up, or at least trying Indeed. to do. So now finally we're getting to a point where some action is is happening. Well, we got action early on when uh, those two guys were first. You know, the one guy Hakon broke away, but then he was caught up uh, by Stian Berg, and now we have these guys there. Uh, but you can see, yeah, and you can see that Stian and Håkon, they have been, they are, they are not in the, in the lead anymore, so they are, they are being caught and, and passed uh, without uh, us uh, noticing. Things like that happen on the road, and still have about 40k left. But of course, at this point, you know, when you pass the halfway point, you are well into the race. Lots of physiological things happen in your body. You are getting tired, keeping up this high pace. And they are about still, the... still only halfway, we have to remember. Exactly. And uh, we, we've been talking about this course quite a lot. And, you know, and as you can see, you know, there is no... No rest for the wicked, as they say. You know, no time to <laughs> to uh, to recover at any point. You just have to keep up the you know the pace. And as you said, it gets a little bit undulating the terrain towards the end. They're rolling, rolling, but the downhills are really fast. You don't really get a good recovery anywhere on the track. 
You don't have a, like a two minute downhill section anywhere. No, no, that is, uh, that is it. Work, work, work uh, all the time. So uh, I think that uh, now it's, there are not many guys here feeling comfortable at the moment. It's, uh, uh, it's hard work. Team, team Kurira guys, yeah, they're a class Nilsson and yeah, we have Stia. two. We have two uh, Kurira guys, so they are sitting really nice in this. Uh, in this, uh, and we also have two Cafe uh, Brigeria uh, guys, so they are also also um, well positioned. And we talked about Klaus Nielsen earlier, and and as you said, he's a Nudenschuss Red Bull Nudenschuss Loppet winner from last year, and also he was a fifth at Vasa Loppet two years ago. Uh, Pretty close. I mean, last year, I think he was like 30 something or 20 something, 20 something about maybe three minutes behind uh, Yedalen. So he's a good skier. And of course, this is the season that he really wants to break through. I mean, it's not a, that young anymore, Klaus Nielsen, but still. I no, mean, no, that been... is, uh, he, he is, uh, he is one of that one to watch and to, um, uh, to see if he is able to take this, this last step into into uh yeah uh, yeah i think he hired a, a, you know, a personal coach even and, and he has been uh, uh putting his uh, focus on 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 this you know uh, and he's 35 yeah, and... 35 years old so he yeah he need, he needs to uh, he he can't expect to be uh, better just by waking up in the morning anymore no it's a la one last drastic move here we have the uh ladies in the middle of this men's group, these guys are a recreational skiers or the amateurs or the elite amateurs, as we can call them. And they caught up with the ladies as they started five minutes behind or after. And this is the ladies, two ladies in the lead, Lina Kuskren and Hanna Falk. Lina, of course, representing Team Ramud then, and Hanna Falk, Lager 157 ski team. And here now you see that uh, uh, this is this I think Lena is enjoying this because now she has somebody to help her with the pace setting. It's going to be uh, a uh, high pace, uh, low grinding pace, which uh, maybe Hanna is not that good to handle. So uh, uh, now we can see that um, uh, we'll see if if um, uh, Hanna is uh, is able to sustain a high pace throughout the whole uh, 90k so uh, this is going to make it easier for uh, for lina at the end even if she will uh, try to to get a gap or she will she will also have a bigger chance in the sprint if it comes down this to that is, this is certainly a familiar scenario for her this is something that lina has done so many times and also Peter you a new grand it's really good at this as well the boys. That's why they. The boys are still are here. Still and late. It's, it's eight boys interesting here. Interesting but... to see how far Max Novak is. Of course, still, still, we'd say number one favorite. They are turning around race. here to see. Look at the situation. I can't. Oh, do we see some? Yes, there are someone. Someone behind there. It is. They are. They are not far behind now. They will. Uh, I think they. Uh, this uh, this gap will uh, this group will be caught. Yeah, and does it look uh, like they? I mean, they're going okay, fast, but nice. it's not that that extensive. Oh, but it was, anyone it was, is going to. Yeah, there, there you see on the right side, yes. Uh, but it's 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 a little bit difficult to to see how long it really is. But uh, yeah, it looks like this is not. But they are coming. They are coming. Seconds, yes. Yes, they are coming fast. But this is really interesting. It's been really, really good and fun for the race now, and we'll see. I expect that when this gap, when these groups come to, comes together, it will have, we will have um, we will have an uh, an uh, calm calm again. They will we will uh, maybe maybe we can see an, uh, an a new breakaway from uh, from one or two athletes. But uh, we'll see. We have to still have to have the last contact here. 
but you're right. I mean, certainly it hasn't been a boring race in a sense that we have seen breakaways. We saw the, you know, very early on and then and these guys. So it's constantly something happening, which tends to be the case with long distance skiing and nowadays. See, we yeah. see a lot of things like this. And you see, you see here that it's Max Novak is the one uh, chasing. Uh, who are in the front of the so it looks like it's Mox who have been been forced to to uh, to use some power here to to close the gap uh, alone because uh, yes and it's Petter Nortug there in number fifty one he's the, he's the second uh, athlete here so he is uh, he is also active this is There's really Ian. interesting Diana there's uh, Nigord as well yes it is I mean it as you said he has certainly progressed you know, uh, uh, really well, you know. And there was a bit of a speculation in, on, on how how long he can, you know, keep up or stay, stay within the elite group. But there he is. Peter cool. Nordhug is somewhat yeah. back at least. Yeah, it's, uh, this is looking quite good because uh, it was a quite high pace. And if you are not strong, you will, will, will not be uh, in a second position there. So... Uh... Quite interesting, this. Like, Quite maybe, interesting. I mean, if this we, keeps going, you know, we all know his sprinting abilities, you know, from the past. He may not be as fast as he used to be back in the heyday, but still. Yeah, we, we, should, we, maybe, maybe we shouldn't have written him off that much, but uh, let's see. Let's see. It can be interesting. It will be, uh, it will be uh, for sure exciting to see Petter Nortug doing another sprint in, uh, in Sweden. And also exciting for him. To do this well is certainly a good boost for him and for his comeback plans. His uh, his compatriot and uh, Petter Shinsta is now at the back. You can see here. Uh, so uh, one Petter in front, one Petter at the back. And here we are. No breakaways. Now the guys are back together. Yeah. Now the pace will drop. Surely it will drop. You see that they are watching each other. So. Uh, we can we can have this for a while now, or maybe someone will try to with a, with a new breakaway. And that is someone uh, might that get is also... a little bit tired of the slope uh, pace. We'll see what's going to happen soon. That was guess... the number ten, Kasper Stadas there as well. Now then, I, as you can see, a lot of people are now since the pace uh, slowed down. A lot of people are now getting sustenance, energy, drinking, yeah. having jails. This is so a now for the, the pace has been high, quite high for some time, and yeah, here we see Amin Rigis trying to uh, trying to or, or getting a gap without even wanting it, and he doesn't want, exactly. want to do the breakaway. Yes, just it's so difficult to be alone in front. So um, he is uh, he is wanting to to um, reserve his energy, but uh, you can see the, the group now is not. It's not uh, so many athletes. We can maybe see if 10, 15, 15, 20 guys. Uh, now they go really slow. You can see that. Yeah. You know, it's... This is this is going. Some of the guys who have been dropped now will come back, uh, and we'll see it, the group grows. But I suspect that the, the winner of today is going to be one of the, these guys. And here are Kasper Stados. He was in the front. Maybe he has uh, been down changing a pole. I think. Or uh, getting a new drinking or belt, maybe or... maybe new drinking belt. I think that's what he did. Got it from the uh, serviceman who was on a on a bike next Sp to him. Speaking of uh, Team Rugged Charge, I I'm a little surprised that uh, Oscar Cardin is not uh, doing this race today. Uh, he has done it before. He's been on the podium here before. He's also a really strong athlete. Uh, so. Uh, uh, but I also but it know... could be because he was he was a bit, a bit injured. You know, he's back. He's back in training. But maybe he feels that this might be a little bit too long. You know, it, and uh, it's coming be. back. It he, be. he skipped uh, you know the the other races too. So maybe he decided not to do any races and just focus on on training. And also, but he's definitely back. He's definitely back in training. And and uh, he he fell down. Yeah. You know, and on roller skis and, and uh, injured himself a bit, but. He, but no worries, there he is, definitely back. Yeah. back but uh, and also uh, Emil Passion, uh, also he he was he he, he should he, he was supposed to do Värnamorullen two weeks ago, but he dropped out because he he had some sickness, and uh, he would also be he has done this race before and uh, also been on the podium, uh, and should be um, uh, should have been a favorite for for the race, but uh, but he is not uh, he is. Uh, He's not doing the race either. 
Yes, no. we still have lots of big, big names missing, and and Tuaras Yedalen hasn't really done that many races, but he will be in this. There will be an interesting race uh, next week uh, in uh, Norway, uh, organized by Team Ragde Charge. Uh, this uphill race, and we should see uh, Nigor is there, uh, Björgen, Teresa Juhauk, uh, and also Yedalen. So it's a 11.5 kilometer race. It's an uphill, uphill race. So. Yeah, the only the season been... continues, but of course this is the last big one. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, the only is uh, is uh, struggling with uh, have been struggling with the ha- with, with his hand uh, after injuring himself when uh, uh, chopping wood, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so uh, he has been uh, he has been a little bit uh, hampered by by his hand in the training, not being able to double pull as much as he would like. But uh, I don't doubt that he will be uh, in good shape when when the winter comes. He's he has never been any uh, uh, summer or roller skiing uh, uh, expert. Oh, oh, look at that! Ooh, he what he was pee. he's going to pee? That, yes, that yes, was very that. gentle by by Stian to to go that far outside the tracks. But he, he probably uh, figured that you now it's a good time. The pace isn't really that fast. He can catch up pretty quickly. Yeah, but yes, but... you're right about Yedal, and, and, and he's uh, certainly he's always strong when the winter comes. He's, he's very even, you know, again last season, you know, he won Vasa ba- Lopez, uh, second in the overall. So he's always a force to be reckoned with. Yes. So now, now to be honest, uh, of course, this is always a bit tricky when you go this, this long, uh, have these long races that uh, uh, finally you, you, would, uh, you would have to go on the toilet to, to pee. And, um, Here's the bridge. Yeah, here we have it. Really nice. Now we're on, over on the west side of the Jada River. Uh, but yeah, you you have this. Um, uh, sorry, no, I I lost it. What, what was I saying? Yeah, you were talking about Ste and uh, Ste and and yeah, and, yeah, and, and when you go slow, you have to go uh, go to the toilet, and uh, and then you have to hope that um, that uh, the pace are not is not increased because it can it can be quite uh, challenging to catch up uh, if if now somebody who, uh, was um, was uh, um, going taking advantage gas, of the situation, yeah, it it will it would be quite hard, and it's often usual that. That the many favorites do do this stop at the same time, so that uh, it's like a mutual agreement. Now, okay, now we are going slow. We are taking a break, um, and we are continuing when everyone is finished. It's those uh, gentleman rules, you know, that you you wait, wait, you know, and and yeah, but that that seems to be the case quite often in long distance skiing that you do do this simultaneously, uh, take a break or. And of course, in the really long ones, you have to pee every once in a while, and, and particularly if the, the pace is sometimes slow, and but you still keep, need to keep drinking. But the race continues. Harvold, Hal, Halvor Korbul Toner from the Team Nærings-Banken in front. That is indeed the case. Since we are now looking at these guys, a quick word about the uh, the boots. When you did racing, did you like to use uh, with what kind of boot? Diagonal, or did you use skating, yeah, or did you use the the what they call the com- combi? Yeah, I, I changed a little bit during my my career as a long distance skier. In the in the first years, I did I use skating uh, skating boots, uh, and then. Uh, I changed to doing to to using um, duathlon shoes, uh, combi shoes at the the last years. Uh, it is uh, and on roller skis and in training, I used classical uh, boots for the most part. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. How come we you know classical boots for roller skiing? Yeah, because it's it was it's they are smaller, uh, lighter, uh, more. It was it was. The, yeah, I, 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 and I, for me, I never felt really unsure on on roller skis. It was not, uh, it was not any big issue with the uh, with the um, because the the, the kumbi schools are giving you a little bit more support in the ankle, 
but uh, for me that was not the problem. So I I, I enjoy the freedom, and uh, in summer when it's hot, I don't uh, I, I I use the smallest and lightest, and yeah, uh, that was uh, the boots, and that was the classical. And of course now they have these uh, summer b uh, b boots too. Uh, yeah, those are the ones that I use for my Finland uh, thing. You know, when I across uh, skate across the country, uh, kind of they, they like skating boots. Or combi boots, but uh, with a summer, it's a little bit of a lighter and and uh, designed for, a, for you to be used in a warm weather. But to to summarize, it's it's quite uh, it's I think it's, it's a lot about taste and and what you what you like uh, more than anything uh, else. Uh, at least for these uh, these pro athletes, uh, when you're a recreational skier or new to to uh, to roller skiing, I would uh, I would recommend a, a combi ski or a or a, a shoe with uh, with uh, some support ankle support. Indeed, it's much easier in downhills, and 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 if you only do double poling, you don't really need to have classical boots, you know, because you don't have any kick wax, no. so you don't need to do striding or, or kicking. But that's 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 what one thing that has changed. It is, and, and now the guys have passed the die, uh, or going through die, uh, 50k, 56ks, they have done, and uh, it was like you say, you see how how work. Kurbel Tuner, who was the first guy through the checkpoint, and uh, Johannes Eklö there in second. Uh, Vettel Tilly was third. Westreim, Engbergsen, Oli, all the guys we have been talking about uh, is there. So we have a group of uh, uh, 23 guys who are within four seconds, and then we have 20 seconds down to some of the guys who are, who got dropped in the in the high pace making. Uh, and Stian was uh, there 20 seconds behind. It's like it, you have, and this is uh, what I talked about now. Stian, Max, me, and Andreas, three three of the biggest favorites. They are down in 20 seconds behind the field, but they stopped in the, at the same time. And there you see Kasper. And Stavos. another one there too. Yeah. So now they are stopping. they are trying to catch up, and and uh, this is often what happens. You see one is stopping, and then okay, the other guys are also stopping. There they are. Here we have Nygård. He is, uh, he is peeing. stopping. <laughs> this time he's peeing. <laughs> he is. We'll give him a little bit of privacy there. Yeah. So so um, so this is uh, this is what happens when um, when uh, when you have some uh, uh, or we, when when one starts, the other one often follows. Yes, because you see an opportunity there. You see, oh, okay, that that guy's good doing it. Maybe I have a chance to do it myself as well. Yeah. Um, what I what I see here is that Marcus Johansson from Lager One Five Seven. He's he's almost a minute behind. Uh, either he has a really bad day, or he has had some issues with uh, with his uh, equipment. I suppose. It's been a bit of a tricky year for him as well. I mean, he performed so well two years ago. You know, and and uh, but last season wasn't really exactly what he he expected or hoped for, and also this summer he's done some of the some of the roller ski races, but uh, not that successfully. No, oh, and also uh, Herman Paus, he is two minutes and forty-seven seconds behind at this uh, checkpoint, and that is uh, uh, that uh, that is either he is on a really really bad day or he has had an uh, had an. Uh, uh, some problems with its uh, holes or skis or something like that because it's not normal to have him so far behind at this stage that is indeed the case but it's kind of hard to say you know that something might have happened it happens quite a lot in a roller scheme maybe even more than in a regular scheme because uh, the, the fact that the asphalt and you know poles and things like that so we'll have to Check when he gets to the finish. But uh, yeah, that was um, that was uh, the break now for the skiers. They are are taking a little taking it a little bit slower, and then we are expecting the pace to pick up again soon. This is this guy is uh, the from Team N N T N U I Sveko. You know Henrik yes. Haugland Suverinsen. Yes. Correct. Good pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, he is uh, the the, um, uh, the the B 
biggest or the, not the biggest but the, a big university in Norway is called NTNU uh, it's the technical uh, uh, university and technical and science uh, studies uh, which are, is the biggest part of the of the university and that is uh, and they have a really big uh, 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 big sports uh, club which is, is actually I think the biggest in Norway uh, where the athletes, uh, when they study, uh, are uh, going together with, uh, are, are, are working together with, uh, they're somewhere skiing, it's really big in orienting, uh, and you have cycling and running and everything like this. Now it's Max. Look at that, Max is getting a jail. No, I think it's, a, I think it's, uh, it's, um, Hole. Uh, uh, oh, yes. oh, they said yeah, spike. Yeah, I, they... I, if I, he was going He's to replacing. the right side to, to have some grip outside of the asphalt now is changing but yes uh, and this uh, this um, sports club NTNUE is is uh, is uh, good in many sports and here you have representative of the of this club in um, in Cardiff so um, and we also have had them in in Bisma Ski Classics you know yes. for a long time the team the university team I was uh, I was uh, ski not skiing for NTNUE, but I was uh, I have been studying seven years in uh, on NTNU, so I know the All right. know the guys and they are they are doing they are uh, besides the studying or they are uh, training a lot and uh, have really good uh, group of uh, persons uh, going together there up in Trondheim. And it's also good for new new uh, students to. To have a possibility if you if you are if you are doing football if you are skiing if you are swimming if you are running you always have some groups that, uh, with the uh, uh, people liking the same thing as you um, which you can be uh, can attach to and to to uh, be with in uh, as uh, as you you are studying. This is by the way a beautiful. Uh, uh part of the course you know remember that when i did the course myself two years ago uh, and and right after that the, the bridge when it goes by the river and the kind of those cliffs you know it's very nice part of the course and here we are back in oh. the women's and we see these the, these two guys we've seen the them these guys guys been leading the, <laughs> this long crew for a long time i think mm, they have they have it's been uh it's been really uh, they they have they are not uh, looking back just going for it and you see that it's small small gaps in the field and it's also in one straight line so that means it's uh, it's going quite fast so They're going uh, really fast uh, like I say I I said I think that uh, this is uh, this is good for uh, Lina certainly works in her favor and we'll get to see the gap between these two ladies and uh, Julia very soon at the 56 kilometer point while still the pace in the men's lead group still relatively well you can really say it's slow but at least they're not going you know full throttle and hopefully Max had a chance to change is a spike and be ready. Yeah, to that, is, that has been. Be. Yeah, that could, could have been quite critical if the pace had been high now. But it looks like uh, like uh, he is going to to uh, be good now when he just to get change his uh, his spike. We'll have to wait to see. Yes, now we have no. Yet we have. Uh, I, uh, I just uh, rem forgot to mention that by Edeby, it was last. Uh, it's some time ago, but it was uh, when uh, we got the confirmation that the girls is alone in this this group. Uh, Hanna and Lina is is uh, is there without any of the other girls. Linnea Johansson is four minutes behind, together with Julia Angelsjö. So um, so that uh, we can definitely say that uh, this is going to be between Lina and Hanna now. Yes. That is the case. Well, in the men's race, uh, it's definitely kind of a calm moment right now. Nothing is happening after those breakaways that we witnessed earlier in the race.
And there we see the uh, number 13, Magnus Westerheim is there. And to try to see who the... Siemen, Inge Bretzenordi there. Guy is... It could be Sievert Halfton Bergen, number 36. I'm not sure, but... And the race continues as these guys are negotiating their way through towards Karlstad, often called the sunniest city in Sweden. Still have less than 30 kilometers left. Bit of a quiet, calm time right now as uh, the breakaways that we saw earlier are not there anymore. We have uh, more than 20 skiers together in the lead group. And then the two ladies that come behind are now skiing with men as well. And those uh, men are recreational skiers who started 10 minutes after these guys and five minutes after our leading ladies. There we see uh, a number four, Marcus Johansson. We talked about him a little bit as well from Lager 157 ski team. Catching up as well. He was uh, he was a bit behind. We we did we did get our group. answer. Then uh, it was not a bad day. It was some no. some kind of kind of uh, problem there. He's in the lead group as well with the, with the equipment. Yes. But also, it looks like that the pace has slowed down quite a bit, you know. It's, uh, after the kind of those extensive, you know, the breakaways when the, the pace was high, now they're going, taking a bit of a breather. Yeah. Let's see, someone will start, someone will do something very soon, I think. Yeah, we'll have to but, see. We, we had, did have some, some action and people were trying to see if they was feeling a bit each other and, and see how... Uh, how they were, uh, how well people were going, but uh, now we have uh, uh, the people. The, you have felt a little bit on the other guys and uh, uh, how strong they are, and uh, now we have a little bit of calm. We are we are soon also going to get into the other sprint demo. With, uh, with the yes, sprint that is correct. That is correct. Uh, and and there we have an Igor now, number one, taking okay. the lead spot. He was taking the first, uh, or at least the third position in the in the first sprint. So maybe he wants uh, more wants money. Take, yeah, more more money. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And now they have a bit of a block there. You know, the Rakte guys. While we go back to this bridge and see women as they pass this beautiful bridge and the uh, great section afterwards. And I guess we this is exactly what we'll we'll get to see all the way through to the finish that Lena and Hanna will follow these guys. Let them do all the work and why not? Number four hundred and forty four is Ricard Moulin. He is uh, uh fifty one years old. So uh about two years older than uh Anders Aklan. Yes. Still going fast. Yes, impressive. And now we get to see a little bit of them, of these towns, Swedish Värmland villages or towns. We are, uh, I think they are now here in Deje, and uh, the boys are are approaching Forshaga, uh, where the where the second sprint will be. But this is uh, this is the town before, where the girls now are passing. Yes, the second sprint is quite long into the race. Yes, it is. It's going to be exciting to see. Uh, I, uh, from my, if I remember correctly, it's it's quite fast sprint and it's on narrow roads and twisting and turning a bit. So it's it's uh, if you want to go for it, it's uh, you will have to um, you have to go for it. It's not that your Joe suddenly go past it first because. Uh, uh, 
uh, it can be quite fierce uh, positioning battle there before before the that sprint. We'll see when that comes, but while we are waiting for that, we'll see these guys passing their drinking station and um, Lena and uh, Hanna are there, our leading ladies. And lots of people ch cheering out there, supporting our skiers as they should. Yeah, the sun shone for a while, but now it's a back uh, back to a cloudy weather. Here we have the uh, yes, Julia Angelsen, ladies behind, and uh, and Linnea Johansson for third and fourth girl on the road. They are uh, they are going to to fight for. It's really cool to have these two going together here. It's going to be a hard battle for third. Both in the sprint in Porsche and also on the finish line, especially. Indeed, we'll get a really uh, exciting battle, you know, for the victory, but also for the third place if these two can stick together all the way through the to the finish. It looks from from, from the looks of it, it, it seems like uh, Linnea is struggling a little bit more than uh, Julia. But, uh, uh, yeah, let's see. Yes, it looks like a bit, at least technique-wise. It's a little bit of a hard time to keep up with them. With the guy in front. And back to these ladies here. It's quite a big group, uh, which are still together here. And of course, I think these guys are fighting for the uh, the, the victory as well. You know, for yes. they recreational skiers. You know, they have their own class, and and then there are some age groups and, and so forth. But here we go, two team Rekte charts guys. I in think front. they have positioned themselves for the sprint now. I think we are uh, we are not that far from from the second sprint. So uh, doing do it like this in on this small narrow road, it's it's difficult for the other guys to to um, uh, get fast, actually. Uh, exactly, and now we have two lines there, you know. And they can, they can uh, do, and when they when they uh, can talk together, and they can also then uh, decide how fast they, they will go. So now they are just, uh, yeah, going not that fast, just uh, in an uh, uh, energy efficient uh, speed, and uh, yeah. Uh, waiting for the sprint now, trying to p pick up first and second, I think. Yes, yeah, quite interesting that we only have these two skiers from uh, Team Ragde. Yeah, I was uh, surprised that not uh, Oscar at least was doing it, but uh, surely it is because of his uh, his injury, I think. But uh, uh, Anders Eiklund and Joar Tele and, and um, As Karsten Joaug and uh, Johan Hol, they are uh, all at home. All at home, but they have that their own race, as we, as we said, you know, on yeah. Thursday. So maybe they're focusing on this. Uh, Nigor said, you know, that he really wanted to do this race because there are not that many 90 kilometer roller ski races. As he's, he's approaching this as a good workout, you know, for oh. us a lot better and so forth. That was it one is. of the reasons he really wanted to do this race is that the length. And he, it is the longest in Sweden. I don't, I don't know if it is it the longest in the world, maybe. Uh... Uh, could be. I mean, uh, it's kind of safe to say that it probably is the longest uh, roller ski race. Uh, of course, there could be a uh, longer ones somewhere in the world, but at least at this, you know, uh, magnitude and, and scale. Now you see that uh, they are approaching, coming into the town here, road crossings, turns. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah, these are the turns you talked yeah, about, you know. The... Yeah, and then, oh, then somebody broke the the pole or the spike yeah, on something, Igor's, yes, uh, exactly. yeah so he was then out of the out of the out game of the here game. but uh but his Aspen teammate Stavos. is definitely going for it for it for Shaga. we'll get to see these guys very soon as they pass yeah, the let's Aspen see Kasper is the number easy. one here 
Klaus Nilsson, number four there. He was out of the out of the money. I don't. I, I couldn't see who was uh, second and third there, but we will get the confirmation soon. We'll get they get it they get it soon. Let's see what happened to. Uh, oh. Here we there have Igor. he gets a new pole. Hopefully, it's the right length. Unfortunately, that is something that happens all the time, you know, and in a race like this, when you have uh, you know, really narrow roads or you know bike paths and and uh, and twists and turns. Uh, exactly, and the, you know the you know the spikes and so. Of course, it happens in, in the winter time as well, but I'd say it happens. There's always a. Uh, uh, the danger of it happening more often in a roller ski race, the roller ski races than in a winter time. It is because you don't have the tracks to follow in the same way as exactly. Skis. But uh, then we have the confirmation of the results here. Stian Holgård was second, and it was Henrik Haugland Sivarinsen who got third, at least after this list. Anything so, you can say about the Tivaritsen guy? I mean, he's uh, no, a bit. No, I, I, I must admit that I have no, uh, I have no. Um, uh, information about him. Uh, yes, he's not not I'm one not of the names familiar, that we familiar to me. Exactly, it's not the, one of the names that uh, we've seen in the Visma Ski Classics Pro Tour. But he's uh, 25 uh, years old, and he has done uh, Vasa Loppe the last two years. Become 150 in 2020 and 193 in 2021. So he's uh, he's a good skier, but uh, he has not been. Yeah. On this level before is this it? high up no no certainly not another bridge it's really beautiful this uh, this facility and it's really cool that you do you have this uh, that you have been doing this work that uh, you have this uh, this old railroad and and uh, you are you are uh, doing the work, which which the fundam fundament is is there from before, and then you just need to, to do the asphalting and that the pay payment, and that is yeah, that is that is really good to see and nice quite, to see. And quite see. amazing. I think they got some EU money uh, as well to build this and then to a good use <gasps> there. But in the uh, ladies' race, we saw that that the finally that the guy is also that. Putting in a little bit there and contributing. Yeah, Patrick, Patrick Hansson. Uh, he is really putting uh, putting uh, some effort into this. And we can hear you can there you can hear that how how fast they look at that. I mean, it looks like he has fallen. You know, look yeah. at his. Uh, uh, it's a bit bloody, you know, there above the uh, the knee. It does. It does. But He's keeping up a good pace there yeah, and helping Rina. I see the group Rina has and... become a little bit smaller, I think. And judging by his breathing, you know, it's definitely going, you know, all out. Yeah, he is. It's and... good. It's uh, he's uh, he's actually born in 1966, Patrick, and uh, yeah, he's even older. Anders Eklund is uh, only you, the youth, the young boy compared to. He's a, to he's this a junior. Guy. Junior skier. <laughs> now, of course, Anders have. Speaking of him, he has performed really well this season. As I was really surprised to see him doing that well in roller ski races. Uh, Allianz Loppet was he twelfth and something like that, and the one in Norway only a minute behind. Uh, so Allianz Loppet, I think, was was really impressive uh, with the sprint, and I know that he also gave his pole away to Kasper Stados. Uh, yes. During the race, and and but Casper was was uh, I don't know if he had some more accidents, but uh, he was uh, he was not able to follow. But Anders was there in the sprint, and he was yes. he, he was the place behind Oscar Svensson, which uh, won two two sprints in the World Cup this season. So uh, yeah, really really impressive. It's uh, he never gets you know. Uh, it seems to me that he never gets too old. I mean, it's <laughs> every year he's like up there fighting, and even the last race we talked about Orefes Lopet, the the, uh, the one that you did as well, and he was uh, seventh, I think, over there, only what less than you know, fifteen or seconds or twelve seconds behind the winner. I can't remember the exact, but really close. Yeah, you know? it was a little, a little bit special, uh, special uh, conditions there, but uh, really, really impressive, really impressive. Anders is a strong skier. Now we have a Indeed. attempt here from Simon Engelbrechtsen Oli and this Eklöv in second position. And then we have Stian Holgård there in third. 
Uh, what about Seaman, actually? I mean, he's been around as well. I mean, done some good races. You know, I remember this a couple of years ago. He was there in the, um, Jeska Paresatka, high up there, fighting for... Here he gets you know, a the... gap, at least. So he, yes, yes, he yes, is but... really strong. He's really strong. The Jeska Paresatka has been his, uh, his speciality, uh, where he's always strong. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, Seaman is, uh, he's, he's doing some work besides, uh, he's working besides skiing and, um, and he's, uh, uh, but he has, he has been constantly up there, both in national, uh, competitions and also in, um, in, uh, Wisma Ski Classics races. So, uh, uh, he should not be, uh, I think that, uh, the guys behind there is, is why well, now is they are uh, they are saying ah oh, should we let this guy go or uh, should we not and it looks like the answer is no. <laughs> yes, team. Yeah, he's uh, he's representing a uh, team Nerdings Bank, but wasn't he the from the uh, team uh, target partner who? Yes, sure yes, but I, I yeah yeah, but I think the the team has just only changed name. If I'm not mistaken, but I'm I think that not, was the case. Exactly, yeah. that was the announcement that they had. But I'm not a new, new name, but yeah. but well, check into that as it, the news came in this weekend. But, and look at that, it's Lena now going by herself there. No, oh, she has some on her wheels, but she's yes, trying. No more, like but the guys still about. there. But the guys are now behind her now. The, yeah. These two guys were the ones doing all the work earlier, yeah. but now it seems like they are not able to. Molina's looking behind it, like, hmm, uh, I wish I could get some little li some help from my friends. <laughs> <laughs> or at least like I, I think that she, she tried. She has tried an attack to try to get a gap on on Hanna, but uh, Hanna has responded well, looks like, and uh, then I expect her to uh, in not that long. So the, one of the guys behind there is going to going to take the lead. And continue. Yeah. And another breakaway attempt, of course, in the men's race. As he man, Ingrid Nordli, we talked about him. He is now seriously considering leaving everyone else eating his dust, but we'll see if that's going to materialize. Not really. I mean, it is tough at this point. You have, really have to be, you know, uh, strong, strong enough. And as you said, it's not expected that the lead guys uh, will give room for anyone to do. Extensive breakaways anymore, I except maybe maybe then right towards the end when one of the favorites can can really go. We'll see if that's going to happen. But... Number forty is Robert Rundin from Carlson CF. And number nineteen is Jonathan Hedbys. Team Sinfjell. For Norwegian team Team Sinfjell. Yes, they've been around as you know, as well, you know, for a long time, you know, Team Sinfjell. Yes, they have. Actually, uh, Hans Christer Holun, uh, the Norwegian national team uh, uh, skier and also uh, double uh, uh, world champion, uh, he uh, he was skiing for Team Sinfjell for uh, uh, some years, some years ago, of course, but so for some years when he was uh, uh, recovering and uh, building strength towards. Um, yeah, towards this uh, after after having some trouble when when uh, in his early twenties. Holland certainly a strong skier who trains uh, quite a lot and uh, and he he, he said... will yeah and he will also do this double polling uh, or drag the challenge uh, race on Thursday in Oslo. Yes, that's correct. He will be there as well and and uh, he has said that. Uh, Nine out of ten skiers shouldn't work, you know, train like he does. You know? <laughs> and that is probably Indeed. true. Indeed. But he is really strong. It would be kind of nice to see him doing a little bit more uh, long distance skiing as well. But of course, it uh, could happen after the Olympics. It could, it could. I think he, he is one. Of, he he was supposed to do Birkebenderenne uh, this winter, but it was cancelled, so he, he was not able to participate. But uh, he is um, he is uh, um, he is one of those guys who enjoys the long races and wants to do Wismaski Classic races. Exactly, and we have many good ones after the Olympics as well, suitable for those guys to join. Both Reistalöp and Birkebenderen is, is um, oh, especially Reistalöp is uh, with kickbacks is uh, is uh, a race that uh, the 
distance World Cup skiers are are uh, suited for. Exactly, and still the race that hasn't been won by double polling yet. So the winners so far have always used kick wax in that mm. particular race. But Lena there in the lead. Now you can see both races there, and then the men's race. Seaman Engelbert and Moodley tried to break away. But yeah, and then she looks like he is uh, trying again, or at least thinking about trying. So he is offensive. Yeah, he's kind of looking, looking around a little bit, kind of feeling, but maybe he doesn't want to do it by himself. No, it's it's really difficult, and and uh, like we talked about earlier, the two two years ago when Stian Hulgor was um, going uh, uh, was going the going he uh, go, going away in the last part, he was doing it uh, the last 15k maybe. So and but he he was he he was there alone, and that was really really impressive that he managed to hold on for so long. Um, so it. Uh, but it's maybe a little bit too far from the finish yet, to, to, uh, for, for at least for those uh, most highest profile uh, skiers to, to make such an attempt. Exactly, that's that, that's what I was thinking as well. That it, it it's most certainly going to happen, but a little bit later on, mm. we need to see some. Of course, for those skiers who are counting on their sprint abilities, for them this is perfect. Uh, but for the for those of for those who don't, should do something. But uh, then again, Max, remember, he has done the breakaways usually only a few kilometers before. He doesn't want to leave it to the last 500 meters, but we could probably see something happening maybe five, ten kilometers before the finish. Yes, now and now we, we are we are actually having a little bit of a, a hill here. Uh, it's, it's about 25, uh, 30 uh, meters in height difference uh, on a four three three four kilometers so it's it's a it's a little bit um uh, uphill uh which could uh, uh make it makes it a little bit harder to to follow uh follow in the group but uh, i expect that when we come to the next checkpoint that ed scott uh it's 11 or no it's, it's nine kilometers uh before the finish after after that point uh we will i expect to see uh, someone trying to to do something that's most likely the case we we'll still have to wait a little bit before we get there or before they get there you can see that uh johannes had uh, his boots open uh i don't know if it's because of, he thinks it's warm or often also when you do long roll or ski distances, you, your feet are 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 um, becoming a little bit bigger, at least in, yes. uh, often when it's warm, and it can be a little bit. Um, uh, you can like feel a bit a swollen. Bit, yeah, a little bit yes, swollen. Yes. So you can feel a little bit. It, it can be a bit bit pain painful uh, from doing long distance. So that I think that he he can could have felt this and have opened his shoes to to get more room uh, in uh, in his shoes. Could be the case, yeah. at least. And then particularly if you use really, some people like to use really, really tight shoes, mm. you know, and then when you do long distances, you know, then then, then your feet get a bit swollen, you know, and then, then that can become a problem. And a uh, little bit of a change there. I think the girls are yeah. nearing the sprint. In the, so Now it's Hanna Falk in the lead. Again, it, does it look like Seaman? Again. A bit, and again, speeding up a bit. He is really eager to do something. Yeah, he is. He, he doesn't have the past the sprint. And he also is a little bit lower profile rider, a skier. So he is, he is maybe, he, he thinks maybe he can, he can get allowed to, to, to have some, some room to, to get a gap. But uh, it does not look like he is uh, able to do it. But let's see if uh, Hanna can take the... Um... The second sprint as well. In the outskirts of now Forshaga. These, the funny thing is that now these ladies are doing all the work. You know, it was the, the guys before, but now the guys given up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> they, they let the ladies. That, that's that. They let the ladies do all the work. Guys, come on. Maybe maybe they saw that uh, that when Lena pushed uh, pushed uh, increased the pace, they they were not able to they were not able to follow. So, look at that! Uh, now, now he heard me. Now he's taking the 
is helping the ladies taking the lead now. This is the way to go. 126. That is Morten Christensen. Uh, I think that maybe could be a Danish. Uh, he's a Danish skier. Yes, he is. Mm. Uh, from ski klubben Hareskov. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't you have an interview with them here some uh, yes, weeks ago? Yes, exactly. With, uh, yes, the Danish, Danish team. They they are seriously considering the uh, you know the joining the pro tour. This first year will be of course more more of a kind of a testing a test year for them. But pretty soon we might even see a Danish uh, team in, in in the pro tour. It's always good to have more teams and more skiers. Uh, speaking of which, the registration uh, has now uh, closed. You know, for the pro teams. And the rule, the rules for the registration is that you have to have ten skiers, uh, or a maximum of ten skiers, but you have to have two boys and two girls in the team. And and I think you also have to sign in for uh, register for at least is it four races in a year just to avoid you know that people that sign or teams sign in and don't do any races so maybe just do one race or two you have to do enough to be called to be called a pro team yeah so um now it's Ian still... back in the back in the lead back in the lead talking to see uh, seaman maybe they are cooking up with something Maybe. Try to conjure up a sprint and leave everyone behind. Hasn't think, happened yet, though. I think that many of the teams do have some skiers, quite uh, three, four skiers. Uh, now we have we have take the sprint for the girls. It's here is the same corners and road. And now we have a right left turn here where Nigo broke his pole, and then we it was just a hundred meters to the sprint. Exactly, so it was pretty much over here. I think where Nigo had a he's. Tiny accident. Yeah, now you see here, how nice again, going. Yes. How nice going. Let's see if Lina is able to goes respond. For it once again, Lina's following, but Anna shows us that she is truly a sprinter. Yeah. Lina is, used to be. Lina is able to follow the wheel, but she's not able to get out in the wind and pass. And Anna's kind of looking behind, kind of yeah. pacing herself, knowing that Lina won't be able to pass her. She that was will quite definitely a long take. Sprint. Uh, that was a long one, yes. She won both sprints. She did. She did. And took home uh, uh, then a thousand euros, correct? Yes, that is correct. So uh, now it's the five, trying to take the five thousand at the finish line also. But uh, it's uh, it was. I must say that this is this is looking like Kalna Falk uh, is. Uh, yeah, he she she has the upper hand now. Uh, it's, yes, uh, it's looking Lina really strong. Do, yeah, and she do need to to hope that uh, Hanna is fading in the in the last uh, case because if she is not strong enough or, or if she has forgotten to eat or drink or something like that because uh, uh, I can't see Lina being able to get rid of, uh, of Hanna before the sprint. No, it doesn't look like that. Right now, it's. Uh... If I was to bet, you know, I'd say it'll be Hanna, but again, they get a, this guy, this guy's been in the lead quite a lot, actually, this one. I can't see his number, sorry. I, uh, and we can't tell him who, tell who he is. But, uh... And of course, for those of you joining us, uh, in case you're wondering who these guys are, they are recreational skiers or amateur skiers, uh, from different age groups they started five minutes uh, after the ladies and they have caught up with them and the ladies are our elite women started five minutes after the men and Clara Slopet is 90 kilometer race started at nine o'clock this morning or the elite men started at nine o'clock and five minutes after 905 the elite women and then 910 these guys uh, it and, looks like it was 368 like uh, who was uh, who was in, the, in front together with our Dan Dan Danish friend? So um, they are uh, they have been like you said they're catching up five minutes with uh, uh, using fast reels uh, must have, must be said uh, or at least they can use use their own wheels and they tend to be a little bit faster than the ones uh, 
being offered by Skigo, our um, or the, the the provider of roller ski for this race. So, um, yeah. Of course, it depends on what kind of skis they have uh, selected for themselves. Uh, they've been recommended to use same type of skis, but of course, we don't know for sure what they uh, the recreational skiers are using. They tend they tend to be a little bit faster. Uh, exactly, and they're using usually usually old older ski and old skis that you've been skied on for for a while, and and that these skis that these guys are using are the ones that kind of keep circulating uh, around and, and are not by, used for any training. They're just used for racing. Yeah. And if you see in the results from from these uh, these uh, guys compared to what Lina and and Hanna is doing in winter, they they in in winter they are some some levels behind Lina and. Uh, and uh, exactly Hannah. we have to remember that lena's performances particularly at vasalop has been really impressive you know she's been in the top 100 and uh two years ago she was the fastest lady of all times and not the fastest uh but the best positioned placed. yeah placed exactly 57 i think was her place back then and she finished together with um with the russian Ilya ternusov yeah, it's really impressive, and I think the the record the the best position girl before that was uh, was Justina Kowalczyk. Yes, exactly. That was like a seventy mm. seventy second or something like that, and then Prita has been in our top hundred as well mm. a couple of times. Max Novak is uh, up. Uh, I was I'm I'm I was uh, we didn't get them, that many pictures of it, but uh, I I think that Max had to use a bit of energy to to close the gap uh, to the, 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 the those seven uh, uh, dangerous men uh, having a gap uh, some kilometers ago. So um, I think that maybe could have cost some energy. Could have, but then again, we know that how strong he is, and uh, he's definitely definitely going for the for the win. And we'll see what's going to happen soon. There you see, Seaman was throwing his belt away to uh, to one of the staff there uh, from his team. I think that um, uh, that is often the case. Now you will see that uh, the guys have been going with the drinking belt for um, for uh, some of them have got done it from from the start, and some has been has changed during the during the race. But now when we are finish approaching the finish, they will throw them away. Uh, and um, you can look in the sprint, there are not so many who are going to have drinking belts around their waist. Exactly, it's just a unnecessary weight to carry. Yeah. And it's it's also a little bit uncomfortable. You are, you're not thinking about it when you have it on, but when you when you throw, throw them away, it's always, oh, like, oh, this, this, was, this was pleasant. So, uh, yes, of course. Uh, it's, uh... It's, um, I think that we will uh, we'll see many of them. Throw them away. So we have Max Novak there, number three, and uh, the former uh, breakaway king, Stian Berg. Still a sip of drink there. Exactly, exactly. That's the way they do it. We've been talking about it quite a lot, but that's the way they do it. They take some sips there. Of course, the good thing about this in the summertime is that you don't have to worry about it, it, it freezing it. You know, but in the winter time, you know, you have to constantly sip it to make a uh, 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 sip it. You know, to make sure that you uh, the tube or the liquid in the tube won't get uh, frozen. It can be it can be re a real pain in the ass uh, sometimes because uh, in in the winter we did this La Diagonela race. You know, like many of you have maybe heard, uh, it was really cold, and uh, Britta Johansson Nordgren and Andreas Nigor was uh, among others were injuring their uh, toes and fingers. Uh, and in this race, I was I was uh, having ski, skiing with this belt, and it's it was really difficult to, to keep it from not freeze from from freezing. And you will have to drink it frequently. And uh, the problem is that when you get when it when you when it freezes, you're finished. It's it's no way to get it uh, get it back. So then it's just just to throw away. Exactly, that is the case. You know, then it's just unnecessary weight. And uh, but in the summertime, you know, it works perfectly well. It's uh, Petter Nordug. He is he is still here and uh, still there. Yeah, and it's he is not uh, he is not uh, it's the pace is not that high now. So um, hmm. 
Uh, maybe we will see him in the uh, in the sprint now. Yes, that'll that's uh, that could be the case. Everyone's kind of thinking now that hmm, this is the longest he's ever been in a in a lead group, and now it, we're getting kind of close to the finish. It's, and he's it's still it's, there. It's, it's been a long time since we'll see Petter sprinting for a victory in in in, in big ski race. So uh, that will be uh, cool, no matter how it uh, goes. Exactly, but we'll still have. Some kilometers left here, and we have one of the favorites up there. As you can see, that guy, number three, is Max Novak from Team Ramud Den. A strong guy. Four consecutive victories so far, and he's going for his fifth one. That's what he said before the race, that I feel strong. I'm just getting back in shape. I was injured. I broke my ribs and took two months off, and now I'm back with a vengeance, and he's certainly been... A force to be reckoned with, but we'll see if that's going to happen today. To his, to his uh, left, we have Gabriel Strid from Team Nordic Jobs Worldwide. He is using you, you can see the uh, the roller ski boots from uh, from one of the from one, from one of the brands. Oh, All right, look now we have he waited this to happen, and now look now, now it's definitely. <laughs> increase in tempo that is max novak we were expecting him to do it and everybody knows that when max does it then it's a serious business yeah you see Stian was trying to take his wheel at once and you see this is really really interesting to see he, it is interesting yes yeah, he's not, not able to he's not able to follow no and the max He's a, we have to remember that he's a very confident and, and he's he's been really strong. He's been the king of the road so far. Uh, yeah, and the, see the boys someone like him to do this. Yeah, and they it's, are not. They are not. Uh, Stian was going uh, going to the side, and no one was uh, wanted to try to follow. This is really really important stage of the race. A really could impressive. Could it be that uh, everybody knows that he's so strong that they're just letting him go? A little bit of a fear oh. of the. Uh, I, don't <laughs> I don't think know. so. I don't think yeah. so. I don't think he. At least Stian was not able to follow him. And when the when he go to the side, nobody was uh, was uh, taking uh, up the. Was was even trying the one that maybe some of the like Nigo and uh, some other guys could have been far behind. If Novak was uh, smart, he he saw that some of the biggest rivals were were not there, so he he d did it when when. Um, when uh, uh, when he when, when some of the guys were uh, not on guard, but uh, it was quite. We'll see. Early. I mean, he's he's certainly pushing, pushing really hard. But we'll, we'll, we we'll still have quite a lot to go before they reach uh, the beautiful city of Karlstad. And of course, Max could be testing it a little bit as well. But it looks like a serious breakaway attempt. Uh, yes. Quite early on for him, and he's usually done it a little bit um, closer to the finish. But um, he knows the track. He knows his strengths. You can he see that the guys, guys behind there is not losing anymore now. So they are. Is it? It looks like it's one guy there who has gotten away. The, from from the looks of it, it maybe looks like it's Simon Engbergsen Oli, but I'm not sure. That is that is not. Could be. Uh, yeah, it looks like that is him, but uh, but and we can't really see how many guys are there. I mean, no, but it's certainly a long line now. It looks like the it. whole field are have been split, uh, and it's more several small groups here. And everyone, I, I can assure you that nobody thinks that this is something that is uh, not dangerous or we are going to catch up later or something. Hey, here, no. everyone is is uh, going full gas. And if you have yes. if you have the power, you you will try to you will try to follow. But look at that! That it's now Max, and you're right. There is one guy behind him trying to do all he can to I catch think, up. And he's that seaman. But yeah, I can think really... it's seaman and but uh, I'm not completely sure. And, uh, and behind there, it's it's full panic. If you if you have yes. or if you have uh, some uh, power left in your arms, now it's the time to use it. That is a good word to describe the situation behind these two guys. A bit of a panic, and they panicking. Must, I must say that Max is is really really impressive. The way he's uh, going, it's so smooth and powerful at the same time. 
Uh, yeah, look at the technique. I mean, yes. this is a good point. You know, you can point it out. I mean, look at that. That's like he has perfected. You know, the, the you can, you can see that it's, at least it's on roller fast. skis, it goes fast. And this is maybe perfect for for Max also that one one guy is trying to is is a, being able to go with him. Then he can share the work with with him. And exactly, it's, it exactly. is Simon Engelbrecht and Oli, and that yeah. is also really really impressive by him. It is very impressive. And look at the, I mean, when look at these techniques, you know, you can see the Maxes is, and you look at the, the, the pole that they have. It's a little difference there. Seaman is doing a bit more work. Yes, yeah, so lo longer strides yeah. and putting longer more strike, effort exactly. into each effort. And, and, but Max is, is a, has a higher frequency. And it's, uh, exactly, and very, very uh, smooth. Yeah, you can it, see it, it, like looks, almost... it looks really, really good. And, but now we'll have to see if uh, it's always like you do, when you do things like this, you are, you are, Doing a three four minute effort, and but it's you have to see for a lot uh, for some more time before you can you can find out how strong you are. Max can, can be really feeling really strong now, but in two three minutes he oh this was it was this was not uh, the day uh, so good as I was expecting. Exactly, there we have uh, one of the favorites, uh, but uh, quite far. It Andreas does not Nigord. look like it's Andreas Nigor's day today. No, probably not. But then again, I mean, he's a he's a good roller skier, but I wouldn't really say that roller skiing is forte. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, not. he's always stronger when it comes to, and also also the early season. Yeah, he's I, not really performing that well in the early season, but but it might be that he has just he was up pulling, and it was now back uh, back at the back of the group bench again, exactly, and he's exactly. at the back of the second group here, and so so he is not. Uh, I will I will I will take back that I, <laughs> that I think that it will not be his day because if they these. Two guys are caught. I would say that he uh, he maybe should be the number one favorite for a sprint. But uh, it's not that much left, you know. And um, yeah, remember this part, you know, this is kind of where there's a little bit of a this little bit up and down, undulating, rolling, rolling terrain, and they're getting close to the, uh, you know, the uh, the city. Yes, yes. And now they have passed uh, Edsgatan. That was uh, so just like when you saw when we saw Nigor. And they have a gap of 7.8 seconds. And it's actually Petter Nortug who is leading the group behind. So, Petter uh, Nortug is leading the group. Okay. So that that's, is, uh, that was, that's something we didn't expect to happen. No, you no. Know? He's, he's third. This far into the race. 11k, 9k case before the finish. So that is really cool. But I don't uh, no <laughs> respect for Petter Nortug. I have respect for Petter Nortug, but I don't think he will be able to close this gap. And we'll have to I don't think so. maybe have Andreas or something. But I, it looks for me that maybe the guys behind is... Uh, giving up a little bit here uh, because they see that they they want to fight for third also and uh, the the guys behind there uh, the ones that are doing the work they will not be they can uh, be beaten in the sprint that is the the, the advantage that Max and and Simon have in the front indeed and there we get to see a little bit of beautiful shots of the city the call start. So if you ever go there, this is actually a good place to, you know, for a lot of, just, um, if you want to go there, it's a nice city. You have Tushby really close, you know, that the ski tunnel, about 100 kilometers away. You can stay there, do the, uh, you know, the roller skiing on this particular track. I mean, you know, these guys, these guys are on right now. And it's a nice place for like a summer camp, for example, to do uh, training. It'll and then, of really course, enjoy a good coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It'll be really interesting to see now if Seaman uh, is... Uh is uh, going to contribute and how for how long Max just will keep pushing without uh, without uh, offering at least or tr trying to get Seaman to do some work. Yeah, Seaman's looking behind. I don't know. If this, if the, if the situation stays like this, this will definitely not. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Now he's giving a little bit of a room for... They are starting to cooperate. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, it was... But it, it was really impressive that what Seaman did also because he came afterwards and then closed the gap to Max when nobody else exactly. else could. And we saw it. We saw that. We saw the signs. He was really eager to go. I mean, he was like looking around, waiting for someone to do something like that. And what I was going to say that if this is the situation all the way to the end, this will be Seaman Ingebrigt Nuli's best race. Yes. You know, to be on a podium without any doubt. And look at that. Yeah. These two ladies have, have they left? I think they have left the guys behind, or yes, or are those two that we kept seeing quite a lot of? Are they now left these two? We don't know for sure. 
you know, but sure. there but are I, guys. I, I, there are some guys behind, but I suppose that uh, these two girls have have uh, Lina. I think Lina has tried again to to get a get yes, on exactly. Hanna, and they have uh, they have skied from uh, all of the, the the rest of the guys. She used that or took that advantage, you know, and and now she or they these two are going going on their own, leaving the guys behind. I think that Lina has, has seen that how nice better in the sprint and that her chance is to try to, to wear, wear her out before the finish. So she's trying what the, the best, the best uh, uh, tactic she has. And, uh, exactly. And now these two guys, they are, as you said, working together as they uh, should be. Now it's Siemens' turn. And even Max is looking behind a little bit, knowing that there's still a uh, few kilometers left to go, so it's certainly not a safe gap by any means. That was um, that was uh, really impressive again by Seaman, and I I think I think this will this will uh, is the deciding uh, was the deciding uh, breakaway. I, yeah. I I can't see that uh, the guys behind her will need to be really uh, to to um, Go full gas and not see, uh, watch each other. Any anything if if they will uh, if they uh, can um, if they can uh, should be able to catch the catch this gap. There's still a chance, of course, but it doesn't look like that. And these guys are now working and working together. And 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 but it looks like that maybe Max is the one who is a bit stronger there as expected. But then again, uh, kudos for. Seaman hang a yeah, bit I, I, I will, great race. I, I will I, the technique of the of uh, of Seaman does does not look as smooth as uh, Max, but uh, it does not mean that he is uh, not uh, that Seaman is not strong and and by the by the looks of things, uh, Seaman and the way Seaman closed that gap without any one of these guys following. Uh, does, that was very uh, impressive. That yeah, was does, impressive. Just su suggest that Seaman is. Oh, this is fifty-one. Is better. He yes, a couple of skating kicks yeah, there as well, but be a little bit careful not here. Too but many. now you, you see Andreas. There. Yes, yes, Andreas has has seen the danger, and now he is going full gas to try and catch. But this is what happening. You see that uh, he's he's going full gas, and then then he's um, somebody he's going to the side and letting somebody else to go to the front but they they are not uh, they are not able able yeah to. they that's that's indeed the case you know let's yeah, and, see a lot of action here a lot of action here we yeah, can they, definitely they, say that and these two guys are working God, working together we are in the outskirts of Karlstad now going exactly, um, not that much left no we we, we are uh, now we are soon coming to this quite hard right hand turn for the riders uh, or the skiers um, uh, where they need to be a little bit careful and break a little bit uh, not to, to because it's a quite tight corner but it's still a couple of k's now it's it's a small. It's a downhill, little, little bit downhill. So it's going really fast. I, I suppose it's going like 30, or 20, 20, 20, 30, 32 kilo k's an hour now. Uh, and it's really fast, difficult fast to pace. catch up. I that think. is it. exactly. There's a little bit of a downhill section yeah. here before they reach the, uh, the actual downtown area. Where none, as you said, they're on the outskirts. Right now, getting close. There we have the uh, chasers. Now you see they are in two lines. Um, they are two guys. Tap to the gate. Also have Klaus Nilsson, and of course we have Petter not taking this group. Have, uh, they work it together. We have. Um, I think Nigor is looking for his long. I think he wants they to are, catch let's Max see, again. They are, but the working. gap is increasing, and I'm really, really impressed by the guys in the front. I must say yes. they're doing a really good job. Nigor is looking yeah. around. Yeah, it feels like they're Looking almost around. giving up now. Uh, Actually, but it, this. it's a very high pace, and now Nortog is going for it again. Now it's... Uh, it, I don't think... And it tries to help each other with this. I think that many of no one is the strong enough to close the gap by itself. Third place. Yes, that's probably the case. These two, I mean, impressive work, you know, particularly as you said.
Max Novak attacked, all guns blazing, and got a bit of a gap. But then Seaman Ingen Bertinudli, who was really eager to go a, a bit earlier on, and, and then realized that he has some power left in his tank, and he caught up with Max. And now these two are a scheme together, and we are, or they are, getting close to the downtown area, the Finnish area, which is, of course, in Karlstad, Sweden. Nice place. They don't have that much to go. A few kilometers left. And so far, uh, three hours and eight minutes, I think, is the time. And, and now in, in just some a couple of hundred meters, they will turn, like I said, right. And they will go off this, this bike path they have been on for, for so many kilometers. Uh, and they will try to begin to negotiate their way into Karlstad Centrum. And then it's, they are still on bike path, but it's, it's more twisting and turning. And uh, and uh, 500 meters, 200 meters before the finish line, they would pass uh, a bridge, but uh, but uh, which is quite narrow. But now, when there are only two guys, there it will not be that critical, and it will be more important for the guys fighting for third behind there. Exactly, and you mentioned the the bike bike path, but it, I think this particular uh, special bike path path uh, will end very soon, and then they go on a regular, but you know the city city uh, bike paths, uh, bike roads before they get to the, the finish area. Number 17 here, it's uh, it's um, Marius Varv, who has done a really, really good uh, race and he will he will also be he will also be um, the one uh, here you see the bike path yes, is this, finished. Yes, and, yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that's that's where fit. it starts, you know, if you, if you leave from yeah. Karlstad and go to the other way, that's the starting point. Now they go on a regular you know, and here we see Karlstad, the Finnish area, and the people waiting. That's but yeah, Marius Varv, he, I would just finish with him. He has done his, He will also do his best performance of his career, I would say, if he can finish this off the last few kilometers. And, and also Peter Nordhug, best uh, long distance, at least in our yeah. Pro Tour. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you see here. Tour, look at that. Now it's... Now uh, it's... Timon, now we have to... Now we have to follow... To, to be aware of Novak, he was going really fast through those turns, and yes. uh, Steeman was it not is. able to, uh, to follow his wheels. Certainly, looking like it, it is going to be a Max Novak's day once again. If so, this is his fifth consecutive victory in uh, in roller ski racing this summer season. And here we have the uh, the chasers there, but they are so far behind. Well, not so far behind. But far enough, I don't think any one of these uh, will catch up. They're not even trying. They are focusing on the last podium place. Who is it going to be? That is the question. But it's Max going Novak... to be yeah, re really interesting here and for the third position with Petter and, uh, and Andreas. And Steel. Look at that. Seaman is still, pu still pushing, but it's it's still. I think that's a bit of a safe. This is a safe gap for, for Max. Ah, no, not strength. safe yet, but. Uh, but, but safe, but. It, it's it's like the tendency, and he, he's not able to close it. But uh, of course, they are going full gas, both of them. And if Seaman is able to 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 go get the back skis of uh, Max, we are not over yet. But uh, it looks like uh, Max is uh, is a little bit stronger here. Uh, now we are on the final straight. Here we have the river on the right side, um, and on the other side is the finish. Yes, and, and they, they go are over now, the last now bridge. going to follow the river for a kilometer and then go over the over the river and have the finish. So, okay, it looks like Max, number one, then uh, Seaman, Ingebrigts and Nudli, but then the big, big question, uh, Irvin, who is going to be number three in today's <laughs> race? What okay. is your bet? What is your I think you know, Andreas guess? Nigor is going to take Nigor. it. Yes, I think uh, so, but... Uh, uh, Petter and Stian and uh, several that. other yeah, guys. 51. For, for those of you who are maybe joining us now, uh, number one is one of the favorites under Sneakwood, but 51 is Petter Nortug. And he is there. Eight, None of us could expect. Look at that. Look at that. There he, there he comes. Uh, is it going to be him maybe on the podium? That was something <laughs> that we didn't expect. That will be a surprise. That will be a surprise. But Max Novak's been so strong, you know, at this last. But... Again, really a great, impressive performance from Seaman Ingebrigt and Nordli. His best race ever so far. I mean, he's been close. He's been a top 10 and so forth, but never on a podium in any uh, any race 
and, pro, uh, no, pro and, tour and, and or the, a race like this. No, uh, and in know. the way he did it by just by being the eight, one, only one to follow Max Novak, he's he's uh, in the last uh, five races, he's the one uh, who has been closest to follow uh, following Novak. So, uh, exactly, but the excitement is still there as we are approaching or these skiers are approaching you can see there's the finish you know they're approaching the finish line and uh, the Here fight have for the last podium left. is going to be fierce yeah. left left turn now uh, soon and then the last bridge Stia, uh, Seaman is, is not that far behind we have to remember that it can happen something with this spike that is a good point it's, you don't need more than that it's only exactly. four or five seconds here you don't even have to fall, but you might slip a little, and then, you know, that's it. So, uh, assuming nothing happens to Max Novak, he will be the But look at these guys. These Klaus are Nilsson. getting ready. These guys are getting ready. And, yes, Klaus Nilsson is Pia there as Bayer well. Is there. Kasper Stados is there. Peter Nordug, Andreas Nygård. Dian Helgård. Dian Hulgård. And Max Novak is coming to the last section of the race, Here we the, have bridge. the bridge. He is the winner. Fifth consecutive victory for this guy from Team Ramutten. And there is the finish that he is approaching. He's setting his sights on this particular finish line, knowing that he will win. Now he knows it. Look, look at that. Once again, what an impressive performance. Max Novak from Sweden, Team Ramutten. He's truly been the king of the roller ski of the summer season. Once again, a victory for him. 90 kilometer race at Clara Sloped. But again, great <laughs> impressive. <laughs> yes, that is he knows, he knows five. it's five in yes, a row. He knows. <laughs> yes, exactly. And but really impressive, you know, Seaman Ingebrits and Noodley. That'll be really, really interesting to see how well he can do but when the winter comes. Let's see. Look the at that. Fight for fur now. But now, these two. One and two, but come. who is going to... Oh, you, you, look, look at that, man. No, look at that. Who is going to be number three? We don't really see from here. Let's oh. see who is going to be number three. Oh, Let's that. see if we can get a, a bit of a footage there. Who is on, number three? Okay. It did not seem to be Petra, at we least. We didn't see that, but we'll see. get the results very soon. We get to see... It was Andreas. Andreas Nigor. Take the Andreas Nigor ahead of Stian Berg and Petter Nordug was fifth. He was fifth. fifth. Petter Nordug fifth. <laughs> that is quite amazing. Uh, maybe we, maybe uh, we don't need to wait to next winter to. Or maybe the... we don't need to. It's much sooner. It's certainly <laughs> happening. I mean, he is he's in a rise. Every single race is doing better and better. And he is going to get inspired by this and to do uh, even more work maybe for for uh, for the winter. Exactly. So, cool. And we have to remember 90k, 90k, long race, though, fast-paced race. You know, uh, as that was a really an impressive performance. Lots of impressive performances today. Of course, this guy, of course. Max Novak. Yes, we don't have to remember him. <laughs> Forget him. He, is, he, he was the king. And, and when he king. does it... He's... For the for the fifth time or uh, in a row or and at least in that way for the third or fourth time, uh, we said from the beginning that this is what was the way he will he would uh, will be expected to to do um, uh, to do the race and to try and attack and with ten k's to go and he did and nobody was able to follow him except Simon Engelbrechtsen. Exactly, that was the case this time around. But we'll see if this shape of his will. Stay remain all the way to the winter. We still have uh, several months before the winter season starts, but he's uh, definitely ending the this season, the summer season, on a high note. It is. It is. It it has happened before that uh, people are which are going fast in the summer has has not been that great in the in the winter. But uh, at least it, it's better to go fast now than than, than never to go fast. So. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. We too. have to watch out for him when the winter comes. That is certainly the case. Jan was number six in the sprint. Um, and uh, like we said, Max and Simon was one and second, one, uh, one uh, first and second. Then Nigor third. We had Stian Berg fourth, Peter Nordug fifth, Stian Hulgo sixth, Magnus Westran seven, Kasper Stados eight, Peter Thiele nine, Klaus Nilsson ten, and Marius Varv eleventh. They were the, yes. had the gap to the to 12. 
but as you said, a great performance from that guy as well. Everyone else in the ten, uh, top 10, you know, of course, uh, familiar familiar names. Marius Harvin, that's a really a good performance, 11th, 40 seconds behind. And then Marcus Johansson, a minute and 37 seconds. Johannes Eklöf, not as good as we probably expected, uh, 137 behind and, and so forth. No, and uh, quite good uh, good uh, from Petr Schulenschinsta was 15. That was... Uh, that was uh... Uh, step in the right direction, uh, and also Marcus Johansson. I maybe expected a little bit more from. That's correct. Of all these, I would say maybe then Simon Ingebrigtsen Nudli as a really a great surprise. I mean, we knew that he's a good skier, but to be number two and the biggest surprise, Peter Nordtuk, number five. I don't think anyone, anyone could have believed. That Peter Nordtug will be number five, only th- 31.6 seconds behind the winner. And oh, only one, 1.1 seconds behind the podium. Yes, really, really, really impressive. And I think that is that is going to be the big, big story from this uh, this event. It, uh, Max Novak taking his fifth victory, of course. <laughs> that was really good. But Peter Nordtug, uh, after... Yeah, three, three years, four years now since he retired, uh, being there, he there again uh, among the the the, the best. Uh, that is that is a big story. That is a big story. I think it's going to be a really big story in your country. The Stian magazines Bike. and newspapers will write about it. Yes, yeah, he will. And Stian, good race from him as well. Yeah, he did. He was uh, offensive winner. and had a breakaway. He did get the first uh, sprint uh, prize um, and uh, finished uh, finished uh, fourth. So that will will uh, he 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 showed that it was no not a coincidence that he won two years ago. Certainly, a good sign, you know, for things to come for him. And. Now we're just waiting for uh, the ladies to finish their train of uh, race, and of course they started five minutes after the men, and they're going uh, a bit slower, so we still have a little bit of time before they come. Uh, they're interviewing Peter Nortug there. It would will be interesting to to hear his comments, and uh, as you said. It'll be interesting to hear what he thinks about the uh, the winter now. I mean, this was certainly a big step up for him, and he might even uh, change change his plans. He said that his comeback, if that's ever going to materialize, would be the year after. But who knows? Maybe we are talking about his comeback even this coming season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that this after this result, we maybe this can get uh, get this. Uh... Get his mind on some something bigger, bigger uh, next year, or I, uh, already this winter. Exactly. There he is. It's expected for maybe we can also have a new team in the Pro Tour to, with him as a, as a captain and as lead guy, and that is that would have been really nice to have uh, another Pro Team. Uh, uh, being established around uh, Petter. Exactly. Now I, I think it's a little bit too late for that since the registration is closed, you know. But of course, he can always join another team for this uh, this yeah, winter and, and uh, yeah. next the next year uh, mainly. Then exactly could um, be the team Coop, you know, that he's been uh, cooperating with so far. Andreas there was also strong today. We have to. He was. Uh, he took the sprint for third, but it was. Uh, I think that was what his his aim was when when he saw that uh, Max and uh, and uh, Simon got away, but uh, of course I think that he's scratching his head a little bit about uh, what to do with Max Noak. Yes, exactly. But we still have you know time before the season, before the season starts. There they come, the ladies, still pretty much together. Ninety one, ninety two. Lina Kosgren and Hanna Falk. And it's Lina in the front, as we as we have seen uh, much of the race. You have of course, Lina's got the word that Max has won. You know that might give a, have a little bit of a boost, but 
as you said, it's it's not looking that good for her, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, Hanna Falk, you know, there's, there's always a question, how fast can you sprint when you have 90 kilometers behind you? You might be a good sprinter, but 90K is 90K. It is. It is really, uh, <laughs> it, is, it is a long distance and uh, the arm, things can, can change quite, uh, quite sudden. So, uh, uh, Hanna can, can feel quite well now, but it's still maybe 10 minutes to go. Uh, and uh, by they come to the finish, uh, she can she can struggle. And it can happen things. There are some twists and turns. Uh, this is not decided yet, but uh, I would have to say that Hanna is, uh, is the overwhelming favorite uh, right now. And really impressive the way that she's uh, kind of paved or paved her way into the, the long distance scheme, adapted to this this and the long distances coming from the you know the World Cup scene and the standard standard distances, particularly from the sprint sprint skiing. So she's really been yeah and quite that amazing. Is, that is uh, uh, one um, one nice part of being a part of a team is that you have uh, you have this. Um, uh possibility to to learn from like she's learned has learned this, uh, quite a lot from britta and from emil and from the whole crew of lager 157 so she doesn't not need to find out what to do in training but she she has a lot of experience and a lot of uh, knowledge in the in the close to her so um uh, that was something I re I remember was really a great advantage when I get, got into long distance skiing from traditional skiing. When I got, got into the team with Anders and Jürgen Eiplan in Team Santander, uh, they um, they was really uh, impressive. Uh, they, they they had so much knowledge which I could learn from, and I knew what to do to be able to to come up on that level. And of course, that is a team that you represented, the uh, Lager 157 ski team, you know, for the last uh, two years or so. And uh, but of course, Hanna wasn't part of you guys, part of the team when you were racing. She she joined uh, after the uh, last winter. But definitely, I think uh, Hanna will be really strong come the winter 2022. You know, this is definitely a storm warning to to everyone that she will be she will be one that no one can count out. The, the in in uh, in general the, the girls uh, race for next year it looks really interesting we have uh, Britta Johansson we, at, we have Lina of course which are the defend, defending champion uh, we have her two uh, teammates Ida Dahl and Jenny Larsson we have uh, Astrid Öreslin which is coming back from a, a disappointing last year we a have, really strong performance from her you know the the yes, roller ski racing yes in top of the Sveka. And we have um, Emilia Fleten, uh, which has changed team to expand there, the yeah, team of Turas Lerdal. Uh, she was the best Norwe uh, Norwegian skier in Wisma Ski Classic class there. Uh, we have Marit Björgen, who are going to uh, do at least five, six races. Um, and we have, uh, who do I have forgot now? We have Hanna Falk, of course. Uh, uh, so it's and all of those names I've mentioned now is is able to, to win races in Wismaski Classics. So uh, uh, it's going to be a fierce battle. Exactly, that's that's the case. I mean, the the women's field grows and gets uh, stronger every single year. So, Speaking of which, now we have uh, Hanna. Yes, she is. She, Lina has. Uh, has uh, tricked her to go, go in front, but I think she, she, you see, like she's drinking now, and she's not going full gas. She's just uh, waiting, and she knows that uh, uh, Lina is the one who she feels confident in her sprint, and Lina is the one who needs to get a gap. So um, uh, this is. Uh, this is um, uh, for Hanna in good position to be in. And of course, a very different uh, scene, you know, from the men's race where we had where we had a really a tight, you know, uh, fight, you know, for the third place. And of course, the breakaway with the Seaman and, and and Max. These two ladies are just they know the just them out there, no one else. And they can kind of look around and <laughs> now, have a bit of a. <laughs> Hanna is throwing oh, yeah, her belt Hanna's away. Okay, and Alina's like, hey, 
taking a sip there and yes. Now we see one of the cyclists behind her is picking up the belt. Yes, exactly. That's the, and that needs to be done. And now yeah, the boys come. This well. this is quite. They, they, this is maybe why Hanna should keep some pace because now we have a large group of men coming back to and them. If they can catch up. You know anything yeah, can happen. Yeah, and there. then then we have more guys, more athletes uh, together. It's it's more chance of uh, mishaps and, uh, and things like that. So uh, little uh, little X factor into the finish here. A little bit of that indeed. And now they are also approaching the end of this particular bike road. They are soon coming to this right. Yeah, okay, this guy turn. is now taking the. Oh, uh, here, here we, we have, have still the... come, still the two girls fighting for third together. Yes. So we get a, a tight fight there as well for the third place. I have no times from Edsgatan, but from Forshaga, they were 10 minutes behind. Uh... From the sprint, they were ten minutes behind. Um, ten minutes behind then. Uh, the two, the duo in front. But for them, that, that does not matter. It's all, only about getting the third, uh, third place on the podium and two thousand euros, twenty thousand kroners. Exactly, that is a lot of money from a roller ski race. Yeah, and for these these athletes are not uh, earning that much money. At least uh, the Julia. And linear. So for those, uh, for for them, uh, twenty thousand kroner is is a lot of money. And look at that. This guy is actually leaving these uh, ladies behind because they, they really don't want to fight that much at this point. They're just getting ready for a sprint finish. Lena understands there's nothing she can do about it anymore. They only have few. They only have a few kilometers left to go. But as you said, you know, these guys behind are uh, closing in on them. And if that's the case, we get a lot of skiers approaching the finish line together. And then anything can happen. And we have to remember that these guys are also fighting for their own positions, you know. So. And this uh, 31 is, by, by the way, Topias Hartik, and uh, he is uh, he started uh, with the lead, or the, with the elite men. Ah, okay. So he has been he has been caught by by the, by the girls. Yes. Those are the tunnels you talked about. Not that much to go for uh, for these two ladies. Well, now it's looking like they they sped up a bit, you know. That maybe those guys won't be able to to catch. Maybe is, uh, not. Which is a good thing. Maybe not. So, which is a good thing. So at least we don't see any, as you said, mishaps or accidents hmm. when they reach that la last uh, bridge. Well, I we'll think... see. I mean, it's maybe they do. That's uh, no. Yeah, it's it's going to be yeah. touch and go, but I I think yeah. that uh, Li Hanna and uh, and Lina do have uh, one or two or three uh, gears extra which they will soon uh use. So uh then uh, the 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 guys behind there is going to to get dropped again. That's probably the case. Now we are nearing this end of this bike, Klarels uh, and, and Here's uh, the finish. We are. Area, which we are getting, well, they are getting close, and lots of people there watching. Yeah, really nice Good to see. Good number of spectators. Yeah, and you see that the sun has uh, come out. Uh, yes, it is the sunniest city in, in Sweden, so why not? But it looks like here is not the, the sun, so yes, it's. Just the sun is only in in the city. It's only in the city. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is the case. Still a little bit time before 
we get to see the, the final final of the this sword is, start. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. As you can see, that sign there. You know, this arch. And here, the right hand turn. You have to be careful here. And then we have a crossing, and then a left hand, hard left hand turn. They will then they come to the river again. Be careful here uh, under the tunnel, and under then the tunnel Let's under see. the bridge, and they go over the street and then they go the by the river until they reach that last bridge before the finish so let's see now do lina korsgren have what it takes or have some some uh, tricks up her sleeve to... Um... She will definitely fight for and do all yeah. she can, but uh, still, as you said, I think it might be Hanna's, but, Hanna's uh, uh, wait, game, what, but we'll see. Yeah, what what we should do? I think that uh, her best option is to go for a long, uh, a long, uh, uh, long sprint. sprint. Yes. yes, exactly. So if she leaves it we... to the last 300 meters, yeah. that's what, uh, what uh, Hanna's really good at. So maybe... She should do. I mean, now we have all these guys together with the, the scene what, that we talked about. Yes, and and what what do Hanna think about uh, not being first out on the? I think she wants to be first over the bridge. Uh, so maybe we can have a little bit sprint sprinting before the sprint to be first. But uh, that now, could happen as well. Yeah, but now this uh, this uh, <laughs> scenario with the with the boys uh, getting involved into the sprint is is happening and. And that is also maybe a little bit of a factor that can... can this is uh, the X factor that you yes. mentioned. We'll see how they... And Alina could be more experienced when it comes to something like this, you know. When, when you have a lot of uh, men around you and you need to kind of maneuver your way and find your way around it. There yeah. she is, but they, I mean, Hannah's right behind her, like, yeah. that is important tailgating for her. Yeah, it's really important for Hannah now to not let any boys between, uh, uh, between her and Lina, uh, because that can be dangerous, both uh, uh, when, uh, when um, uh, if Lina is, uh, is uh, trying to uh, uh, make a move, or if... Uh, uh, the boys are doing something stupid, uh, the recreational skiers. Yeah, I mean, this guy in the, in, in the front, you know, we've seen uh, quite a lot of him. Yes. He's been, you know, with the, the blue shirt, you know, he's he's been leading this this gang, you know, for a long time. Yes. Uh, we checked him uh, We checked him before here, but I'll, it's, I think it's, uh, it's uh, Klaas Olsson from Göteborg. All right. So very soon we'll get to see who is going to be the winner of the women's race. Klar Elslop, a 90 kilometer race in Sweden. Karlstad, the finish is just around the corner for these two ladies. Of course, there are plenty of guys. They are surrounded by guys, guys that actually left five minutes behind or after them. These are recreational skiers. But we'll see Lina Kuskren and Hanna Falk there. Lina representing Team Ramudden and Hanna Falk, of course, Lager 157 ski team. Who is it going to be? Which one of these two skiers is going to take home oh, the victory? Now, Look at that. Now Lina Lina's is going trying. around a little bit. Oh, did something happen need there? To work out. Yeah, this is exactly as you said. Now they need to be extremely careful because it looks like Lina is trying to do something knowing that Hannah's breathing down her neck. If I were Hanna, no, I maybe think that I should go a little bit faster to, to just get rid of these guys, because here anything yes. can happen. Yes, there's a little bit of this, a little bit of wary situation right now. It's uh, uh, quite many guys around. I mean, in a men's race, you accept it, that's it. But now this, these two ladies are fighting for, for yeah. the victory. It's two different competitions here. So. Exactly. It's happening at the same time. So. But um, let's, let's yeah. hope that the guys give a little bit of a space and room for these ladies to uh, to have their own you know fight. That they don't interfere, even if they have their own race, of course, and they are fighting for their positions. It looks like uh, Hanna is uh, is going to 
And this is not where the men go. They went up on a large hill or the a bigger road. But here is uh, the, yes, this, exactly. the girls will have a sharper left hand turn now uh, onto the bridge. But it looks like Hanna is, is staying behind. She uh, she will not take the lead, at least for now. It's quite but interesting that the ladies are gonna go this way then. Yeah. Now here they have the turn on the bridge. Yeah, they have the turn. All right. Now look. it's 200 meters right to there. go. Now Hanna and is the last still... bridge. Yes, Hanna last is bridge. still... Now look there, Hanna, Hanna attacks. Hanna attacks. But look. Oh, uh, Lina, is, Lina is really strong. Not well. giving up an inch. Look at that. But Hanna is, is strong. now. They to be really hard. Really, really hard. Now they come down to this last curve. They have to be careful there. But Hanna is in the lead. Lina is right behind her. But it is looking like Hanna, Hanna Falk will be the winner today but lena's not Lina giving up not giving at in. all lena's fighting 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 who is going to win it oh, looks wow. like kind of a really a tough yes, win, that was finish a... but it is hanna falk as hanna we falk expected it. but it was tight it was really a tight fight and uh, yes, it was, and, uh, i was impressed by lena that uh, she she had uh, she's she's clever and had saved some energy there i think so it was not uh, she could answer when hanna did uh, did try to pass her that was really, really a great sprint, and a good thing is that the guys kind of realized the situation at least, and and gave some room, and and but they went so fast too, you know, uh, so no accidents there. That was that was really really good as yeah. as well. Fair, fair sprint. Hanna was uh, was the strongest. That was uh, that, that was a good. Be, that will give her a really good morale boost, then to see that she could can ski for for ninety k and not not. Uh, and being being able to to follow uh, uh, follow Lina and beat her in the sprint. Her her victory there, and she was really close at Allianz Loppet, uh, but then Emma Ribom was a bit faster. But now she finally got what she wanted. A victory for her. Now we have to wait at least about ten minutes or so before we get the. The, most likely the uh, last frenzy of the yeah, day. We'll, I'll just check if we have any any uh, any um, updates on the girls from uh, the second to last split point. Did we get the last split points to see? Well, while you do that, I think we get here, we get the picture. The, the, there they are, those two ladies, you know, approaching. And while you are checking that, I can then go through the top 10 in the men's race once again. So Max Snowbuck from Team Ramudden, uh, he was uh, number one. His uh, winning time was three hours, 15 minutes and 13 seconds. Simon Ingebert, it's a newly, really a great uh, performance from him. Uh, he was 5.8 seconds behind. Then Andreas Nigord, uh, number three, Team Rekte Eiendom, and he was 30.5 seconds behind. And then Stian Berg, Team Cafe Brugeriet, their number four, and Peter Nordhug, the surprise skier of the day, 31.6 seconds behind. And right behind Peter was Stian Hölgard from Team Kurira, and then Magnus Westerheim, and right behind Magnus Westerheim was Kasper Stardas, number eight. And he was 32.9 seconds behind. And then Vetle Tuli, number ninth. And Klaus Nilsson, tenth. And Klaus Nilsson was 37.9 seconds behind. And then Marius Harb, uh, 40 seconds behind. Then there was a bit of a gap. Uh, Marcus Johansson, 12th, he was a minute and 37 seconds behind. So those were the results in the men's race. Uh, I have uh, checked the split times and in Edsgatan, uh, nine kilometers before the finish, it, uh, Linnea and Julia were 14 minutes behind, uh, 14 and a half minutes behind uh, uh, Lina and Hanna. So, we have, still have uh, 10 minutes approximately to the finish for, for these girls. Exactly, they, they are coming. Kjell Erik Kristiansen uh, is interviewing, interviewing. Hanna Falk. Yes. Unfortunately, we don't hear anything there, but it would be most likely an interesting interview. 
to find out what she thinks about the race and the course. Call start. You can even see the logo. It has uh, it has a sun there, the sunniest city. And there's uh, former pro athlete Anton Carlson. Exactly. Anton Carlson, our cameraman, race director today, and Anton Carlson was second at Vasa Lopet uh, this winter. Retired after this season, much like you did, and also Elin Moulin. All of you now working, working for the big happy Visma Ski Classics family. We are all passionate about uh, long distance skiing, skiing in general, as are all these racers and skiers out there. And now, of course, Hanna Falk is one of them, a former World Cup skier, sprinter, who is now definitely paving away and becoming, becoming a strong long distance skier. There's also Glenn Ulson, you know, the, from, uh, from, uh, from the race organization. So we still have to wait a little bit before we get to see who's going to take the third place in today's race. What do you think? Yeah, that's uh, that's a difficult one. I uh... I, I do not have any uh, any information about the sprinting abilities of the two girls, but Julia has been yeah, has been longer in the circus and she she has uh, a lot of experience that way. So uh, uh, yeah, I uh, I would have to say Julia for. for well, I think I'd go for the same name, but as you said, as you don't really have that much uh, knowledge in terms of the sprinting capacity and um, particularly after a long race like this but we are expecting to see yet another tight fight there by the time they those two ladies get to this area uh we, if you look uh, more, longer down the result list the uh, split times in edskatan we have hanna lodin uh, in fifth and ida palmberg uh, the ramuden girl in uh, in sixth uh, they are 22 and 23 minutes behind uh, Hanna and Lina. And uh, they are eight minutes behind uh, the battle for third. Third place. So when you do a long race like this, uh... Of course, the first thing you kind of need to do afterwards is start drinking your protein drinks and recovery drinks and make sure the recovery happens, particularly in the winter time when you know that your next race is coming up. Of course, now it's a little bit of a different ball game as these skiers don't really need to worry about the, you know, racing in the following weekend. Uh, but any tips that you'd like to give to, um, to our audience, you know, they're the ones that kind of what to do after a race? Uh... The most important thing is to to eat and drink and to to get uh, to get uh, hydrate uh, your system uh, and to to have a, a recovery uh, or, or to eat something. That is that is the most important. Uh, after that, we, we you 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 just need to to make do to to. to, to have the time to, to not to do that much uh, training the next couple of days and to, to have time to recover. That is uh, a process that is difficult to speed up. So it's uh, eating and drinking and um, uh, just resting. What do you, generally speaking, um, what did you tend to do afterwards? I mean, a couple of the days after you mentioned the recovery, but did you go? Did you have a day, the complete day off, or did you go and do 